But anyway, everybody all right? Yes, Two to be alive, always by the kind of Yahuwah. Didn't have to do it, but it da 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 Everybody got to move. So we're making preservation, reservation while we're here. Isn't that right? He said, in your uh, patient possession, your nefash. So I'm waiting on Mr. Yahuwah as he come back while I'm in doing it and make sure I'm keeping hold on my nefash. Isn't that right? That's by staying with what he done regulated, what he orchestrated. Isn't that right? That's the only way you're going to make it in. It got to be according to what he said. As he declared the seventh chapter of the book of Yukon, he that amon on me as as the Kuka beam have said, well, the, uh, yeah, the Kitha beam have said, he said, out of his belly, coming out of his bowels, he said, going to flow in the heart of, of Kai, and that in the heart rivers of Kai, isn't that right? Living my I want, I want to be a possessor of that. That's my goal. That's why, um, that's what my desire is to be with him. I understand to do that. That's the thing. You got to complete him first. Got to make sure you got it right. Isn't that right? Can't be wrong about this thing. Got to have it right. So we go through it, we examine it, we look at it, and uh, we try to put things where they go at the end of the day to make sure we're right before we leave him. A lot of people, they, well, people had opportunity, they just didn't take advantage of it. Some people procrastinated, some people played around with it. They got time, keep looking. Let me think about it. Before you know it, you're gone. And when you're gone, you can't go back and repeat nothing. Everything you're going to do, you're going to get him. Isn't that right? Hang in there, Chris. You don't sleep early. Hey, y'all. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them things they do, one thing I do when I cut them phones off, stuff like that to them early. These folks get the young folks and everybody. I know they be working, that folk we working here, everybody get to go on. A lot of y'all kind of, he ain't on the way, other they grown with him too. They know how they go on to sleep too. Some get their best sleep when they in here. Ain't that right? That way you'll sleep your little life away. It'll be something you miss. It'll be on purpose though. He, he intended it for, he intended, he intended everything for a purpose. When it's something that critical and serious, you know, if it's serious to you and it's critical to you, you'll take it to that point. When it's not, then it's not that important. It's, you know, however it comes, whatever it is at the end of the day. Make no mistake, though, we all got to appear before the judgment seat of Yahuwah. And then you have to give an account for the deeds done in your body. I know he might feel like dad probably tight on him to do that, but you care about his soul. I know what you're doing. A lot of times, for young people, y'all don't understand. I hated my daddy, too. I hated that joke of the devil. I sure miss him, though. Isn't that right? You appreciate him later on. You realize everything he tried to do, it was just trying to keep me out of trouble. He really did. You know, everything I thought that man, me and Chris were talking about, he said, man, you thought they hated you, man, the way they did stuff. They didn't. They just scared. They didn't want you to get in trouble. Them folks would see trouble a mile away, and you with people, they just like, yeah, I don't want that one back in my yard. You first thing you think, that's my friend. But then I said, that's not your friend. He ain't lying, time prove everything out. But when you're young, you don't see it. A lot of y'all young, in your mind, you think you know something. I tell you something. You don't know shit from Shaola. You don't know nothing. I tell you, flat in your eye, flat footed. Don't want y'all know shit. You just think you do. And you'll run here, you'll make a decision, you'll think you know something. You'll find out later on, it's the bad decision, you just wrecked your life. See, a lot of times, what well, older people done did, the reason why they old, they already done did what you're trying to do. What you think about doing, we done done it. You thinking it, we done done it. We know it's gonna fail. We know you're going to come up short. Talking about somebody, your friend, your friend will have you in prison, locked up, knocked up, have you somewhere dead. That's what your friend will do to you. And they ain't going to get you out. Everybody your friend and you gone. Ain't nobody been busted out of jail yet by their friend. Ask anybody who got, ask, did your friend come get you? Friend, don't even tell your parents you locked up. Them niggas keep moving. When I got locked up, them dudes ain't coming out and try to put no money on them. Them dudes going to keep moving. And I did the same damn thing to them. I tell you, I'll come visit no criminal, man. You'll be all right. Ain't that right? I'm telling you, a drug, I was a drug dealer. And I used to put mine up. I, just, I had a friend to go see other guy that knew was in federal prison. Man, we're on the seat. I said, who? My license at a federal prison? I sell drugs. Don't y'all know? These guys so, I had friends. Listen, they all went to jail. They so dumb. Try to tell them, you don't give them your license when you're a criminal. These bastards go down here, get a license, it comes to another criminal, they're a criminal. They record this stuff. They're running it. Who comes to see a drug dealer? You ain't gonna believe it. 
other criminal, drug dealer. We will be watching you. I never did it. I don't care you now for five minutes. I ain't getting my license. I'm not going up. There you go. You a criminal, you don't get them for your license? Well, that's the dumbest thing you could do. They running it. What you thought they do? Oh, okay, you go in here and see them. No, no, no. You go on a system. You on paperwork. These folks escape. You know who they come to? Everybody on the visitor list. Yeah, right. now, my name not going to be on that list. Man, I, you'll learn. Folks, tell how I got caught. It ain't hard. These folks think so much about you, they come to see you. You got to go see one of them, you break out. Then the first home they staking out. I had a cousin, he went down to get another uh, guy like a cousin to me. He went down to get him out of jail. And had he been about a couple of minutes early, he'd have been straight. But damn, if he didn't get that late. When he got that man and paid that bond, my other cousin, he was already gone. Yep, he ain't even wait on his bond. Hell, they jumped the guard and left there, down and needed to. So they came back to tell my cousin he was gone. They let him know, you're on the hook for getting him too. You just paid that bond. Man, he around that boy, he worried some kind of death, man. That's what you get. You want to see a criminal and put no, you be all right. No, no, no. When you're on that side, you got to leave everybody where they at. It's that bad. That's the name of the game. You get caught, you go down by yourself. I only told one time. I want to told. They want to told on me. I prayed me and Jesus talk. Jesus would have still been my friend today. I'd have told y'all by that time how Jesus brought me out and kept me from getting caught. But damn, if I ain't letting I pray, it was a good prayer. Man, like I seen the little thing opening up and stuff, it was dark out there. But it just looked like the clouds were moving back and like the stars. You know what I'm saying? It, looked, it was just kind of mystical or some kind of going on there. And boy, did I pray. I pray. I seen them police car turn around, they were leaving. I seen them juggle circle back around and part back. I said, it's one more in the woods. <laughs> so that's how we do that one. That's how we do that one. So as soon as I got in there, I seen them first two niggas head tore them, fade bleed. Let them down, got in that room, man, choked me out. I, you know, dropped a couple of little, little turtle head coming out of here. He just da 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 like he could tight. Da -da -da. He did that couple of jobs. Type them a draw right quick. Got that bad guy. said, let me get that paper. <laughs> yeah, I won't got that paper. I wrote me a little album. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that album. It was a hit, too. <laughs> it was. It one of them locked me up. Well, we went to court. Yeah, looking at their mom and everything. Mom now, they had to take their jury. I get their mom and their jury. They were going down there behind them bar. I was standing up with the dead, we were standing up with the dead, we signed that, signed that probation paperwork. <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> they taking them boys out, turn around. Them boys leaving out the court, they going, yeah, you got to go do some time behind this one. I don't, I don't know what you call my name for. Y'all got caught, y'all should just left that on y'all, you know what I'm saying? Keep it going. Y'all good, don't call my name, don't folks come back. You don't did too many, they know how they know how many folks in the wood. It's one more in the woods. We know how to sell all dispute. And as soon as I get out here, I get that paper and pencil. We'll fix this one. Ain't that right? Y'all all right? I want to tell they want to tell on me first. Ain't that right? We'd have been good. I've been like, nobody said you get caught. That's the name of the game. That's on you. I had one, a uh, same guy that got out one time, they broke out a, a stolen car. One of the guys who went down that time with me, he was in that with my cousin. My cousin, he was fat. That joker jumped up out that car, took off them four. He smoked them poles. He was gone. That joker ran so fast and so hard, his ass ran in a circle and ran right back out there to the pole lady. Out of breath. No lie. This ain't a lie. He ran so damn fast and so hard. When he hit them wood, do you know he ran a complete circle and ran straight back out there to the pole lady? He was out of breath. That joker walked up to him. He, 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 was, he was gassed. It was the easiest arrest they ever had. They never even took off behind it. It was like, had they ran, they'd have wasted time. He was coming back. <laughs> it happened like that sometimes. Y'all all right, though? Yes, Two to be alive. Yes, Two to know it's a plan and play for it to get it right. One thing you ain't got to do is let your old life be your present life. That's right. That's the truth. You ain't got to let your old life be your present life. You can make a change. The day. And I miss you. Who are calling all of us? He call her through situation, he call her through our hell, he call her through the bar, cause some of us, we ain't gonna hear the word, so you gotta let something happen in your life. It is, that's how he call her. Some of us, I mean me, I wouldn't hear the word till something happen. 
Some of that's what it takes for it to happen. Something got to happen in your life sometime to get you where you really get serious about saying, you know what, I got to make a real change. For a lot of people, I said some people come in, you know, everything was all right. I wouldn't really know what I know now. I wouldn't take nobody everything was all right. I wouldn't even take it because you ain't a good candidate. Ain't nothing happen. You come in, in in good weather. I come in through a storm. You come in through a storm, you be glad to get into some shelter and, and some safety. It is. Some, it, just, it don't work for you. You don't play around, you mess around, and you're going to think it's okay and really it ain't that bad. Really, you ain't really should. You can't. You have to come because you really wasn't that bad. And you're going to be procrastinating. You're going to be on the line. You let them know you're going to be dead. You're going to be sitting in my pot, and you're going to burn alarm and alarm forever and ever. It got to be a crisis. It got to be a storm bring you through. It got to be some stuff going to kind of kind of break loose on you and get you to a point where you really get your mind set to realize this is something you want to do. This ain't just recreation. Some people, like some folks you drill, it's recreation. They just take it to the park. When they get home, they let it go. You don't get a recreation. This, I, you can clap right the rip, didn't you? Yeah, can't, can, can I let us see in the mail, cool, can I? Don't mess it up now. Don't mess it up. <laughs> in that right? I like boss said he told his other guy, we told him, he said the bathroom said the African guy told him, said if you get to heaven and he ain't down, he said you in hell. <laughs> Is he gonna roll out that tight? Man, say, if you get to heaven and he ain't down, that man said you in hell? Say you in the wrong place? That's serious right there, boy. That you sit out there, the cool wind blowing, you chilling, all your clothes white, beautiful singing, all that stuff, pearly gate. That man said, and you look around, he ain't down, that man said, uh oh, this hell. That's crazy. Man, people got some vivid imagination. That just straight out just wild and crazy, ain't it? Well, what are we going to do? Putin said he's getting ready to go in and launch a big attack on Ukraine. They already done killed that joker down there in Japan. Y'all all right? Was it tight? No, nah, I'm saying y'all all right. I mean, just y'all all right? Now, nah, I mean, I just make that I ain't know. I ain't know if, I ain't know if did that. I don't know if he might did like an Ed Rose special or something to him. What happened then? Yeah, 2000. What, well, he came in about 12? That just came in. He came in doing Obama. And now he's the longest reigning, longest reigning emperor. Not emperor, I'm sorry, uh, prime minister. They don't use titles. They don't use titles like that no more. That show you right there when you get domesticated by these folks. Yeah, they would have used, they, they used Japan, China. They used emperors. Nobody had kings. That stuff come from over him. Like Ethiopia, them talking about kings. You got that stuff in your oppressor. All them titles, nobody using that stuff. Every time I'm the king in Africa, nobody know what you're talking about. Because nobody has. You ever heard of the king of China? No, they don't have an emperor. Now they got president. See, that's when you start doing business with these white folk. These white folk make you change your title. They change your title because now you see them. They would have traditionally wore their robes. Like in Africa, we wore it now. Everybody wears suits now. White folk, when they keep dealing with it, they let you know, you know, that's okay you want to do it. But business, when you're doing business, though, you need a shirt and a tie on. People respect you. They always punk everybody their culture. That's how they get everybody. They punk it. No, no, everybody come down there. Listen, everybody got to put on a suit. They punk it. They got, Fidel put on one before. Even though he wore that arm for tea. Oh, Fidel don't put on one. He wore a suit. They going to punk you. They going to get you. They going to put you around and tell you now. Now, Gaddafi didn't wear no suit. No, he wore his. See, most of them look at this. This is our traditional clothing. We're not changing like China, Japan. People are put on their traditional roles. When they're at home, around their people. Versus keep your culture. The white man stole his. They always, they shame everybody out there. You know, you say, who dresses like that when you go in public? That's something for like a bedroom or something. They're like, no, this is our traditional clothes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff you see on their clothes, it's symbolism. It's similar, even in Africa, they have different symbols on there that look crazy. This symbolizes what tribe they connect to. When people see it, they know what tribe you're from, what's your neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Certain about, it says something about your culture. Like, oh, we wear stuff. What is our culture? We don't have one. The nigga don't have a culture. What is Polo? Polo is not even by a black man. That's by white people. They just stuck a man on a horse. Hell, he ain't got no eyes. And he got a stick. Hell, he could be swinging at you. And we love him. We buy him. We get him. But see, other people, it's other ethnic groups. They won't wear it because they look at it. It's not their culture. There's a man that white people culture. Oh, goodness. Y'all got quiet. Y'all get upset. That's why. But let me tell you something. As simple as it sounds, you don't realize a lot of things play a part to why you don't have an identity. And when you don't have an identity, then you're open to accepting other people's identity. It's just like, what happened with having an identity is similar to not having um, an immune system. You don't have anything to fight. See, what you don't know, why? how many of y'all in here sick, not sick right now? Not sick. You know why you're not sick? 
because your immune system fighting. And it's still fighting right this instant. It's fighting. In order for you to get sick, it's got to defeat your immune system. You can't get sick to it to defeat your immune system. While you sitting here, there are thousands of diseases and viruses attacking you. You have no idea. They're attacking you. They just like have, they just, they just, well, trying to just check, just see. Immune system is fighting. When your immune system drops, they get in. So your immune system is always alert, trying to detect. It's trying to detect something's coming. Something's trying to get in. I'm trying to keep it from getting in there. Okay. You got lining inside your intestine. A lot of foods they give you, it eat up the lining in your stomach. So you know what? Other disease, even inside your body, there are bacteria that are actually trying to get inside and they're trying to penetrate through your intestinal walls. Why y'all think you're taking these probiotics and taking a lot of other things we give y'all? Because you got to get these things to try to protect and try to get your linings up. There are things trying to attack you at every time. Why are you sitting here? Just like they attack you with television, with radio. They attack you with news, ads, and video games. They attack you through music. They also going to attack your immune system. So you're constantly being bombarded by something. Either I'm going to beat you mentally or I'm going to beat you physically. Yep. Yep. Yes, I'm going to get you with an ailment. That's how you're going to be. So why do you think it was important when Yahuwah took us? He put us in a place that was fertile and it had everything you needed. You had the word, so you got the mental. So it stuff, and it kept you away from people, so that was a blocker. Keep other things from getting. Yeah, he said, I made you, I separated you from other gooing. Why not? Other people carry diseases. <sighs> they carry diseases. They got opinions. The others are, why do you think he told you not to go after these people, gods? Right. Darling, why do you think not? Watch, why, he told you not even join with them. Why? He said, because you'll go a heart. They're going to break your immune system down. You don't have one just your body. That's the purpose of the word. It gives you an immune system. So when fornication comes, when adultery comes, when hypocrisy comes, your, your system supposed to come in and fight it. The reason y'all don't fight it because you don't have one. You don't have an identity. Why you kept think? Why do you think he kept reiterating when he would speak? I am Yahuwah. What you say? That's that's ownership. That's so it be a connection when I talk to you. You have a reason to listen. It bother you. If I said my dad is talking to me, how many y'all trying to listen? You trying to listen? To my dad talking to me? Exactly. Who he talking to? Exactly. If your dad is talking, you who's supposed to be listening? You supposed, so he said, I'm your Allahim. Who need to be listening? Well, hold on, I know he said, but why they not listening? I'm Yahuwah, your Allahim. Your Allahim. I'm telling you who I belong to. I'm not, I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to you. When Yahuwah spake, when Yahushua spake these Dabarim, who heard it? Who did he speak to? He was trying to tell them, I'm your Savior. His name is Yahushua. That means Yah. Salvation. Y'all saved. That's why. The so when he came to us, he was talking to us because I'm your savior. Right. We're trying to make other. Listen, I don't go out here and mess with these people trying to make nobody do nothing. I'll be the last person. Yeah. I have no interest. Now listen, now listen, man. I do that, man. I'm not getting that witch kadosh to no dog. That's right. I don't get that witch kadosh to no dog. Listen, you're free to believe whatever you want to believe. Yeah. I'm going to rub no gay parade trying to stop them people. Man, y'all going to tell them boot holes I'm going to yeah. do what y'all doing, man. That what you, that's where you at. That's where you at. If he put it on me to speak, it's going to be because he done told me to intervene. Otherwise, I leave it on. But why not? I need to jump in the middle of that. Go ahead and get your head busted. Let them people have it. I ain't been running up in no second marriage, second husband, second wife marriage. Just walk up in the wind and check them out who been second. That's not my concern. When he get up and let me speak, I cover all ground then. That's what I'm saying. I do like Michael. Then I'm selling all family, I'm selling, I'm selling all family businesses now. The people that's all here, they're going to hear what I'm telling them. People that not, you're going to do what you've been doing anyway. You're going to burn later. Hello? Like the white cell here, I know you're going to pay for it later. See, I got an opportunity while you're on this side to get it right. These people don't sit here, they don't, listen, that man ain't just, you think that one man walked in here and assassinated that man, you had that much anger that, that you assassinated him and you stood, you stood him? No, you don't do that. That man here was a plant to kill, he would be killed because that man looking at running for another office. Got to get him out of the way. That man go, he's not the first um, prime minister. His father, his grandfather was. Did y'all know he, they, had, they had already charged their, they had charged their grandfather with war crime before? Did y'all know that? Of course you didn't know that. And he beat him. And he became to be the ruler of the country. White folks don't ever forget. See, niggas got short-term memory. White folks don't never forget. See, when white folk, when you do something and you piss white folks off, they'll charge you with war crime. White folk do it, it's in the interest of we're trying to save the people. Now, which one sound better? It's in, it's in the best interest. We're trying to save the people. Let's say, okay, y'all want to have a stupid conversation on how many people died? They want to talk about how many lives we saved. 
<laughs> Come on, why you think they get you with COVID? Yep. How they beat you on? Look at the lives we're saving. People ain't never saved no lives. They killing more people. Yep. All these folks ain't got their vaccination, ass shaking, heart hurting, arm hurting. I'm going to tell you, you didn't get that shot. Not you, I'm just asking though. You didn't get the shot, did it? That's a different one. But that shot, I mean, your daughter tried to get you to get that shot, didn't it? I ain't expect your daughter try to get you that shot, too. No, she still is. She still is. You go. Yeah, tell her she be all right. Tell her you'll meet at her funeral. <laughs> Time to meet you at your funeral. You keep getting said, Go keep getting boosted. Right. Yep. One of them boosts, I'm going to be at your funeral. I'm just come. Be saying, Who you, how you related? I'm not. Why are you here? I told her I was going to come to her funeral. <laughs> Playing with that shot. They still won't tell you folks the truth. Y'all know on a few news even tell the truth about this shot. These people really say, they're not telling you. know they, Why they won't tell y'all how many people in the hospital behind that shot? Y'all know Brad Pitt done came up. He got some kind of face disorder now. He, oh, it's called facial blindness. I've never heard of it before in my life. Oh, yeah, Brad Pitt messed up. See, I'm not making this up. It's called some type of facial blindness. Brad Pitt messed up. Justin Bieber, old lady, still messed up. Y'all saw they kept that here? Oh, it messed her up. Was his wife or his girlfriend? And him. And he told him, it's the vaccination. You said, how much news you see on it? And then he read it, sticking in these babies. Oh, they messed up. Big name people. They got a lot of Hollywood people messed up. They're not showing them to you. I forgot this one white lady. I seen her. Man, she was messed up. Her eye was red. She was talking about how she got the vaccination, how it affected her, how messed up she was. Go ahead and keep getting it. Go ahead and keep getting it. They'll learn. Don't try to even, and see, they got to keep pushing it. But then they in everybody's face. And, they, and listen, they want to give you the number. You know they go to the hospital. They want to record their numbers. They don't record them. They'll record you if you go. You come up with COVID. You had the shot. Record. We got another one here. Didn't get the shot. Say, so many damn folks in here had the vaccination that got this, who was sitting here sick. They don't, even, they don't even record it because they don't need you to know that. That's how they make a fool out of you. Make you think the only people out here getting sick are people non-vaccinated. We back away, they say, you non-vaccinated, you get it, it's going to kill you later. I've been doing pretty damn good myself. Hell, I feel like living a little longer. If he don't mind. They had a song that said, I feel like going on. I feel like living on. I mean, I had it twice. I'm still living. And oh, he got a defect. Your mama got one. <laughs> Ain't that right? Ain't that wrong? I'm feeling pretty, I'm feeling mighty nice. And the second time was better than the first time. And I don't want no third one if I can help it. But I'm going to just be honest with y'all. We out here and get out your mind. It coming. If you out here, I'm just being honest with y'all. You out here and you live. And you know what? You know, you see a few people out here on the mat. They so proud of themselves. And they still getting it. They got folks at home by themselves, locked up, and they still got it. You ain't get, it's in the air. So you tell me you brushing your teeth with that mask on? You got to tell them you do. Because cause you got mm, you got to push and the mask going to bag it up. All right. You get one need that. Hold on. You ain't never had one need that. <clears throat> you ain't never had. Who ain't who done, who done had, ain't never had a turd where it need a, <clears throat> just a little push? We human. You got to take that mask off. Because you push and it's a scent still in there and it shoot out your mouth and it come in and man, it going to kill you. That mask got to come down. How they eat? So they eat the mask. So I have to the disease. You, you got your mask on. You're going to take down the mask to eat. Yeah, I'm going to wait till he get through. Go take a bite and put it back. Now you put your mask back up. Now I try to take. Now you take it down and eat something. I'm going to leave it down. He got to eat. Now put it back on. I'm trying, I can't get through the mask. Who's this damn dumb? Who is this dumb? Am I telling people go out here and tongue kiss everybody out here with disease? No. But that should be practical. You're not escaping this. The only thing man need to do now, man need to get right. That's just being honest. You might well get right. I don't need to keep lying. Man need to get right. That's why it's him. He's trying to get man to turn. There ain't going to be no cure for that. Just stop lying to yourself. And when he do let, when he find this side, enough is enough with that. I assure you he got another one. He ain't going to end. That man, listen here. You got droughts on one end. You got floods on the other. Man, what, South Korea flooded. A lot, lot of this underwater. I think they saw the Australia. It's a bunch of places. Man, they're bad. Britain, they're on extreme heat advisory. They burning up. Man, Mr. Who are cooking or flooding or shaking these places up. Yep. Earthquakes, killing them, bomb, leader. Another African, in, uh, a leader in Africa died. He died today, too. They ain't going to talk about the nigga. They don't do that. They don't want to talk about anybody more white-skinned than you know, closer to them and do all that kissing on folks and shit like that. And they kissed on him because he let the Navy base stay there long as he should have. Somebody again, they gonna run their ass off the property. Tell me time for y'all to go. And then I'm just being under with you. That one, that one they gonna get rid of. They know it's time they lease is about up. Just like in Cuba. 
It was time for it was time for dad to go ahead and brother to go crazy too. They had a hundred year lease on that place. Man, America get your stuff. They already know by the time uh, you'll die, we've been gonna kill so many of your people all by then, we'll go back, we'll make up another hundred years. That, that's how it works. That, listen, that's why for us being under with y'all, a bad business for us to do business with these people to we learn how to do business with ourselves. And I want to tell y'all today, uh, flat footed, brown eyes, salt and pepper hair. I'm for abortions. I thought about it, I considered it, I weighed the matter, and I looked at it. I'm for abortion. I'm for aborting whatever contract we're signing with these people. It's time to get rid of it. The damn thing killing us. And this abortion right that I'm for is for our health and for our welfare. It's time to abort. It's time to abort. It's time for us to get our ass out of here. I am for abortions. I support abortions. I support the right to choice and the right to life. And the only way we're going to live, we're going to have to get a abortion. I hope you call it abortion. We need a abortion. I'm just being honest. We need to kill this shit we got with these people. It's time to go. It ain't working. So I want to come back and apologize to people for telling you that I was not for abortion. I thought about it. I was a hypocrite, and I'm back to apologize for being a hypocrite. I am for abortions to save lives, yeah. mainly ours. Yeah. Had we had the abortion a long time ago, Breonna Taylor still been alive. Yeah. If she would have died, it wouldn't have been caught no bullet shot up. Right. Yeah. Joy Floyd, he would have died. It would have been because of some other cause. It wouldn't have been because somebody sat there and just choked hell out of him on the ground. And you know they charged him. You know his charges was murder without intent. If he didn't mean to kill him, how many of y'all believe some shit like that? He didn't mean to kill him. When he was hollering, "Mama, I can't breathe," oh, oh, oh. be still, be. He, he moved for damn near a minute, two minutes, and you still didn't get up. That just show you that white. It don't matter about the jury because of listen. You can't win. They're the prosecutor, they're the judge, they're the jury. So anyone you beat out, we still got you on a triangular crossfire. The judge got the last end. The prosecutor wasn't going to drive it home. Then they get a jury or they don't pick their own people. Your peers, how you going to be my peers? I don't, I don't know none of y'all. What you make a year? What's your, what's your school level? How, how far did you, how far did you uh, achieve in school? How could you call yourself my peer? I don't, what do we have in common? You're going to put people on a jury that don't have no idea about what you've gone through or what you're going through or all of the circumstances what you're going through. And they're going to get some fact. They're going to present it to them from somebody that's trying to make you guilty in the first place. Yep. It's going to be hard for you to make a, a rational decision when your facts come from somebody who already done demonized me. Hello? I'm the only one coming to the courtroom with sheriffs standing around me and standing on the wall looking. They already know that. The table tell them I'm guilty. And you tell them, I got to leave it in your hand to come along. All you're going to do is that it's got second emotion. So we need an abortion. It's time to kill it. Get rid of that baby. That baby done did a lot of damage, though. Yeah. I'm trying to tell y'all. Oh, my goodness. Abortion started out early, before 1776. Yeah. They were bringing them little baby, putting them on them black women's titties. Abortion. Yeah. Late term abortion. Yeah. We've been better than we are today. They don't want to hear, but it's true. A lot of this would have stopped. Yeah, right. Abortion right. They right. Black people, we suffered because they took abortions out. But we didn't, we, they didn't never give us a chance to use them. They used them on us. Hello? I'm telling you, y'all ain't got a, you ain't no bad person because they say you bad. That's right. Now, I used to do that. I thought I was bad because he said I was bad. He not all of him. All you got to do is give me the words. Show me your verses. Prove it out with the book. Where you got it from? Right. This man, he'll create a book. He has to create a book and fabricate a story to make you guilty. Yep. Hello? <laughs> that, man ain't got, that man ain't got one law he done got that he ain't took from us, he ain't stole from us. And you don't come back and use it on me. You can't use it on me. It's only for me and you for me when it belongs to us. Yep. Hey, hey, I can't use my law with none of the other people. They don't respect. They don't obey it. That's he right. never talked to them. And so, man, gonna tell me you ain't the Bible say you ain't supposed to kill. I don't know where you got that from. That's right. It told me we weren't supposed to kill each other. Yeah, that's right. The book could have never told you to kill, not when the man went in and he had certainly told her to kill everything in them. Right. That makes absolutely no sense. Nope. But when you're gonna take it, and now this is how he convicts you. If you kill one of his people, what, what makes y'all question? 
why don't we find where Musha repented for murder? Right. Right. Musha killed a man. Sure yep. Why we don't find a book record him as a murderer, right. as a killer and a felony? Because the only people that would charge him with that were Mizraim. Yep. So our laws don't have no, we have conflicting laws. You can't use my law. Of course, what is a Mizraim going to say? He's the slave master. I'm the slave. I'm enslaved by him. He be one of mine. I jump in and help and I deliver the person. What is he going to call me but a murderer and a low down, dirty bastard, black bastard murderer? Yeah. What is he going to call me? What is he going to call the Mizraim that killed the, that killed the Aubrey? That's right. what, what's the title for them? That's right. Upstanding law abiding citizen. Yeah who back at that time didn't know it was wrong. What you expect my oppressors to say when one of his people do it? What y'all think gonna say about George Chauvin? What was his name? What was it, George Chauvin? What's his name? Derrick Chauvin. What are they gonna say about it? Unintentional? Unintentional murder? That's how white people do it so they can get out later. You know why you put that on there? So when he go see a jury a year from now, this is how they gonna do it. First they're gonna look at your case. Unintentional, intentional is different. Yes, I'm here for murder, but I mean, even when the judge gave him time, they said when it was unintentional. It was unintentional. How much? If I stepped on your foot accidentally, that's what? So she should push me and knock me over the pew. But if I walked up on my own and took my, and stomped her foot with the intent, then what should happen? Anything go. Anything go. Well, if I judge, well, ask me how I judge it. I call that unintentional too. How am I judge myself? What y'all think I'm going to say? Oh, no, I'm wrong. I need to be beaten and thrown the key, thrown away. I'm not, that man not going to judge himself properly. Why would you? He's always going to misjudge you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We just need to get this abortion going. Like, oh, for, let's get these abortions going again so we can get ourselves out of him. These women out here stupid self. Go to crying about the kid. Don't want them to get killed, want to get guns out the, out the school because kids being killed. And then they're going to go in here and they're going to let the man go up in the vagina and snatch the baby out. Make plenty of sense. Then they're going to go get a shirt and say the soccer mom. Need to sock that health in the head. Isn't that right? That's crazy. Now, I ain't going to say no. Um, now, I have supported abortion on the other one. He kicked out some dollars before, too, now. I was in ignorance and unbelief. I wasn't, I wasn't part of nobody. I wasn't, I wasn't no amount doing no amount not doing nothing like that. So a lot of stuff I've done before I'm lying, I ain't know. But when you come into knowledge, you know you can't keep living off of that. You got to do better. Isn't that right? So you come back. So I ain't nobody speaking from one end. And I was only trying to do it because I was trying to look at, yeah, I ain't want to get involved. It wasn't because I was trying to save no mother life or nothing like that. I didn't want to get involved. So I was like, yeah, I wasn't trying to get pregnant. I was trying to have fun. So I supported some things in my lifetime. But you come into the knowledge, you realize they ain't the way we're supposed to go in society to make it convenient for you, too. The women are already set on. They don't want to lose their figure. You keep around up, bump, bump, bumping around like that, you're going to lose something. Isn't that right? That's just being out there. Go along with it. Isn't that right? That's in your, your hood and set up. That's the way it's supposed to go. You keep dropping seed in the ground, eventually something gonna grow. You can't keep going dropping no seed in no woman. That's just like fertile ground. Something gonna grow. Isn't that right? Not unless you go and poison the ground. That way you're gonna stop them going. You gotta poison the ground. They give them a lot of stuff out here. They can take and go take birth control and poison the ground. Then there's other defects you can get too with it. That's just being honest. There's a lot of stuff people do you ain't gotta do. That's just being honest. That's it. They said. They claim Connor's got something in it. I don't know nothing about it. But I know one thing. Maybe they'll get you some aluminum foil and a rubber band. <laughs> if you can cook roasting stuff in it. How many of y'all done cooked some food in aluminum foil before? Is you dead? Well, you don't know what aluminum foil is. <laughs> I just try to give them a safe alternative. But now they're on the real tip. It's just time to get right. It's time for everybody to just sit around there working on getting right. So I get our young people right, get our old people right, middle-aged people right. At the end of the day, we're leaving him. Yep. Isn't that right? I don't want no false illusions about it either. We're going to go here and we're going to dive in, look at this book, see what does say Mr. Yahuwah, and see if we get some understanding. And plus, we're going to ask some questions. And Rudy going to explain us some more stuff he did here later than we know nothing about. 
Rudy, you done did a lot of stuff we ain't know about. You in tune, you eating tuna fish casserole every other day, and the other and the day after that you eating barbecue. Is that not the story we heard Wednesday? Yeah. He said, no, he ain't barbecue every day. He said, we'll have a tuna casserole. And then after that, and so what was what all y'all have during a week? What's the menu for the week, Rudy? Give me one week menu. Think of a week menu. What was, what you ate for a week? No, I'm saying what what you eat? Just say a week. What was you eating? Monday. Tuesday. The world. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. Saturday? Salad. Sunday. No, no, no Sunday. No, no Sunday. Rude, I grew up in the country. No, no, on a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday meal. Them collard green, that cone. I don't wait no no, not no. He got Sunday. Every, you were not eating that. You get a Q steak during the week on Sunday. Now you're going to get you a Sunday. You're going to get a roast. You're going to get you something in that area. On Sunday, you get collard green. Might get that macaroni cheese. Something like that. Something like, I don't know. We had no potato salad on a Sunday. You had to have something with potato salad. Have potato salad. Potato salad. That's that barbecue. You probably down at Rudy House. On Sunday, we didn't have potato salad. Did y'all have potato salad on Sunday? I'm telling you, what y'all ate with potato salad? Y'all were vegetarian though, weren't you? So you all, growing up, you was always, your, your mom was always vegetarian. Your dad ate the meat. He ate meat though. Y'all ate the vegetable. Well, I said, Dad, I need to sell him with you. <laughs> Ain't that right? Tell that, tell, tell that, you mind if I go throw your plate away? <laughs> but he said, lick the plate clean for that meat. But no, I don't have no potato. We ain't had no potato salad on no Sunday. What y'all had with potato salad on Sunday? Dressing. There's too much going on. Black eyed. Ho, 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 ho. No, no. No. You can't have no two. Two of them, man, them major vegetables. A black eyed pea and a collard green on the same plate on a regular Sunday? It must have been Jesus' birthday. Man, we ain't have all that. Potato salad dressing. Collard green, black eyed pea. Yes, on a Sunday? Yes, Me, y'all ate like on a Sunday? Yes, I need a candy out. You ain't like that? See ya. Yes, Collard green. Yes, dressing. Yes, black eyed pea. Yes, potato salad. Yes, on a Sunday. We ain't got to the meat. That way too much. There are two meat. Yeah. That was, yeah, yeah that everything you had stove top dressing. I ate that thing a couple of times. Yes, stuffing. <laughs> But you know, it be folk, but you know what? It be restaurant to sell that stove top dress and folk think they eating dressing. Cause people ain't grown up eating no real dressing. Yeah. I'ma tell you something. Now. I ain't smoking Mason dressing, boy. And that jib is great. Yes, she put her eggs in her. You got to have I see folk make that jib. You want some jib? I said, yeah, let me get it. Look at that. I said, damn, ain't one egg in this thing. There ain't no gravy. Man, she but you got it. I stuff I ate. It just throw me, man. It throw me. I said, this this is throw me. I see you folk cook chitlin, man, I go there and I got some chitlin. And they said, I was like, damn, something missing. They both had hog moth. We had, we had the hog moth in there with that thing. How many of y'all eat chitlin? Did y'all have with the hog moth in there too? I see you folk down old little noodle up, little, I said, something is missing in this thing. You, I right, a hog moth, you know what a hog is? He got a daddy, he got a moth. Hog moth. That's all. He can't be, he can't be born in himself, can he? Can a hog be born in himself? He got to have a maw. He got a paw, he got to have a maw. Hog maw, you got to have them in them. They eat like, now I seen Russian rent pass hog moths off at Chitlin. Tell me, we sell a chit eat, he said, there's not no chit, there's hog moth. The folk be like, they got Chitlin. They used to say that about, uh, this is it. This is it, they never sold a the Chitlin they like. They sold hog moth. But you know, folks don't know the difference. I grew up, we had the hog moth in the chitlin. Man, that woman could clean some chitlin, boy, she ain't got the money, no. Woo, boy, y'all done took the wrong way back. My blood pressure started itching on the Richter scale. <laughs> that thing like, come on, a little higher. Jeff, four stroke. 
Man, ain't that right? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, he's trying to world don't move to the beat of one drum. Put them hog moths in them chitlin. Damn world be spinning everywhere. Man, now, y- y'all ate a, how many hog moths chitlin eat together? Hold on, right, you from Mississippi. How y'all eat chitlin? Oh, regular. Now, what, now, do you know what I'm telling you? Do you know why they put the onion in now? That's exactly right. That's why you did it. Put all, really, you take them to, you would burn them on the stove. If you had an electric stove, you cut in half and put that onion on the stove, let it burn, help with that smell in now. But that's why you would put that onion in now. Some of them would cut it and drop the onion. Also, you put the potato in there, too, to help pull that. Uh, you would put a potato in there, cut a potato. I had to cook my own. Cut it. You didn't used to do that. That's on me. I learned that. You cut that potato. She ain't nobody. She thinking now. I mean, it made one more pot. <laughs> Make sure you drop that potato. But now you cut the potato. I know some of y'all niggas still eating it. Just send me a picture. No, I'm talking about that. You cut that potato and you drop the potatoes in there with it so that potato try to suck up some of that stuff. That chili put a lot in them. I remember one time, man, last time I cooked chili, 19... 1994. I was feeling good. I sat there, boy, I had my greens all covered, my turning green cutting up. I sat there and lit me one, started smoking one just sitting there. They yeah, feeling pretty good. Then I would clean them chili. I was rolling. I said, bum, I went and bought some 100% clean. I damn near put 200 some pounds of chitlin carpet over this other side. Chinese folk tell lies all the time. I'm at the curry market, down in the curry, that's like, I said, I'm chitlin, 100, clean, 100, I said, clean, 100% clean, 100% clean. They asked me, go you come back for your money. But I had some of my damn trash in that sink. Some said, well, just check the chill. I want them damn chill. I said, that's a lie. I was just him, but I got my little weed, smoking a little bit, smoking. And I turned around to do something, and I went back. And I damn forgot what sank the trash in the chill was in. Man, I studied that thing so long, I kept looking at the trash. I look at the chill. I look at the chill. I look at the trash. I said, oh, hell. I mean, because you know what? Weed will make you blank out. You turn, whatever, if you're doing something, whoever you are, if, I don't smoke it, but if I did, whoo, I'd be happy. But anyway, no. But let me tell you something. I turned around to do something, turned back around, and them damn saints got mixed up. And I was on a roll. I sat there and, damn, I said, the trash, the chitlins. The chitlins, the trash. I, I was so confused. Man, it took me a long time. I don't know one thing. It was a good meal. <laughs> At the end of the day. At the end of the day, it was a good meal. I damn sure wasn't finna throw them away. I just went, I just, I said, at that point, you just gotta go for what you know. <laughs> Isn't that right? The cleanest one out of the trash is the chillin'. That's all I could do. That's all I could do, but I couldn't throw in no chillin'. Hell, back then, chillin' was eight. Listen, a bucket of clean chillin' was $10.99. That don't sound like nothing now. But in 1994, with inflation today, $75. They don't show one for throw no $75 worth of no chitlin in no trash. I had to make a decision. I said, second this decision. Which of this trash looks the most like clean chitlin? And hell, that's what we cook. I dropped potatoes in there all I could. That's all I could do at that time. I ain't always been no preacher. <laughs> I made some mistakes in my life. But I damn sure wasn't going to throw away no damn 1099 pounds of no chili. I was not going to do it. I was not going to do it. I saved them, and I went over them. And I want to say I feel like I made the right decision back then. How many of y'all done made some decisions in your life, and when you made them then, they seem like the right decision? That's how I felt. And I'm sticking with it. Isn't that right? Every now and then I cough. A little piece of corn will come up or something. But I, don't, I don't think it's got nothing to do with them chilling. <laughs> Y'all are some sick people. Y'all know that. I just want to see what kind of sick people lay about them chilling. How many of y'all, to be honest, if it was grace, under grace, right now under grace, if you could get under grace now, boy, Rod done something in his seat. Rod, Rod, I'm thinking about that grace. He said, when the grace? <laughs> I ain't ready. Your grace and mercy <laughs> brought me through. <laughs> but under grace, I'm talking about grace and mercy. Not mercy, mercy. If you can eat some chitlin, you'll sit down and you'll enjoy your plate.
All right, the rest of y'all know to tell the truth now. Tell the truth. Yep. Huh? Have our own what? Have our own pig. Oh, your own pig. Oh, that'd be mine. Once you pay for it, it's your pig. <laughs> Wait a minute. You said, what am I? You don't like chitlin'? Get a pig something else. All right, man, hold on. Yeah, now, let me ask now. All right, now. But really, if y'all ain't, listen, if you ain't strong enough for no chitlin' on the grave, you ain't strong enough for no real. I don't even want to talk about no real. Yeah, yeah, that, man, that man ain't trying to be said. Man don't believe in grave, he don't want no chitlin'. Let me tell you something now. Under, if there was a like these folk, they fake grace they got. If it was a real one like that, I'd give him a little plate of chitlin'. Over rice. Got, got to cook it over rice. I'll give him some crab lid. I don't know if I had a deep fried lobster tail. Y'all done had one. Did I name shrimp? Whistle shrimp and some scallop. Maybe a bucket full of crawfish. With some baby back real and some regular side real. With a center point cut chop, pork chop. Over gravy. Mm. What well, time is rough now, boy. But I ain't no use to keep going with that grace ain't gonna come for it like that. <laughs> well, I tell you what though, but them crab leg and them shrimp. But you don't know, you know what though, till you move away, you don't realize boy what you in. You say, God damn my brother. Man, you that scavenger, scavenger. Yeah, scavenger. <laughs> man, you eat that stuff, man, that's a cockroach. You know. Yeah, cock. I don't know what they're talking about. I ain't never seen no damn cockroach look like that. I ain't never let no cockroach want to snatch your damn leg off and boil it. <laughs> no cockroach never looked that good. Man, a cockroach look feel. How you confuse a crab with a damn cockroach? But it sounds good when you tell folk that stuff. Let me tell you something. You can get saved you want to. Stuff's still the same. Because somebody ugly, go ahead, go, ahead, yeah, go ahead and get saved and see you look pretty. Your spirit going to be beautiful. Your faith. Whoa! Shot the hell. <laughs> he made it that way. Got too many folks try to get saved just to fix their looks. See, he made it that way. He got he to have it like that. See, folks will get saved for the wrong reason. See, the way salvation works, I mean, you know, I say stuff from uh, and, and all in all, you, you can be saved and still be sick. You can be saved and still be broke. You can. You can be saved and you can be homeless. Yahushua was. So the value of salvation is not about the tangible things a lot of times that we look for and see. Because a lot of people seek salvation for something. I got gravely ill, and I wanted the Lord to save me, so to heal me, so I got myself right, right with the Lord and got saved. You know what I'm saying? So you sought him for the fact of getting out of the condition rather than looking at there's a more pressing uh, condition than what you actually see and deal with. It, is, it really is like people being sick or, or people being homeless. People like, you know, I want to get right. I want to get saved because I don't want to live outside no more. I want, I want to come inside. I want to have a house. I want to have a family. But see, you got to look at the house that you're really looking to possess is a place for your nefash. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A lot of people want salvation for the wrong reason. I, I want it for the wrong reason. I want, a, I want a salvation I didn't want to spend the rest of my life in prison, and I didn't want to wind up getting killed out in them streets. That's why. That's why I did it. But along the way, you start realizing <clears throat> you can get those natural things you're trying to obtain and never obtain what you really need to get for your ruach, right. for your nafash, your soul. See, I don't want my soul to be locked away in a burning shield. You can get out of a jail, whether you die or however, but you're going to die, and you won't get out of shield. You can get out of sickness if you die, but you can be still sick at your nefash to where he just set you down and let you just rot and burn and you never get no relief. So then the initial draw is what got me here. Then I had to sit down and consider it's something bigger than what you're thinking about. Oh, yeah. It'll be your counterfeit field that'll ring you to him, but when you get an understanding, you realize I'm with him for more than that. The things I feared before that, I don't feel those things to that extreme anymore. 
I feel more of being without. Like Yahushua said, don't fear him that can destroy a body. He said after that, he can do nothing. He said, but fear him that can destroy a body and the fire, and then he can cast you in the Sheol. See, that's a person that, that's got a continual hold on you. So that's something that we have. Now, like I said, we laugh about that. And I'm, and I'm realistic. Like I said, crab leg, if I could eat him, if I could eat him, I won't eat him. Okay, but well, give me your plate. I ain't going to be trying to fuss nothing on you. I don't get these folk with all this stuff. They so say, because some people like to lie. It don't matter. Even if he said I can eat him, I won't eat him. Your mama, just stop lying. Because he said I can eat him. I ain't asking no more questions. I'm gone. Like I said, for conscience sake, I need to get him. I suffer to be so now. But, but at the end of the day, it's about our nefash. It's about your nefash more than anything else that you have or you got or anything else you care about or you want to get. Ain't that more important than your nefash. Listen, all these kind of things that we suffer and we go through, whether it's sickness, incarceration, whether it's family, whether it's marriage, or whatever breakup here, none of this is eternal. That's, and, and in life, when you're going through something, it will seem like it's never ending. How many of y'all have stuff going on that seems like it's never ending? It seems like there's no end to it. But guess what? It is. See, problems, situations have a way of making themselves look like but eventually, you look how quick your life, how, how quick you've grown from um, fetus, embryo, to newborn baby, to finally going to nursery. And you thought you'd be, how many of y'all felt like you was in nursery like you were going to be there forever? When you was in elementary, it seemed like you weren't going to never get to high school or middle school. You was in high school, feel like you were never going to get out of high school. Then you get to like, I'm never get out in my 20s. Then you say, like, hell, slow down. Yeah. Yeah. All that never, never <laughs> went too far. So guess what? With problems and situations and, and other things affect you, they got to end too. Even Yahushua told him that. The book said he will reckon among the transgressors. He said, God, the thing concerning me got to end. That ain't going to be forever. That's not going to be forever. Sometimes it do it. When you're going through it, it seems like, man, you, sometimes a problem can hit you. You don't say like, man, why me? It's my whole life. It's everything. That's not everything. He just put us in things so we could settle. And the thing to consider is nothing happened without reasoning. We have to learn to have an acceptance to certain things like Shaul do. He learned how to be hungry. He learned how to be full. He said, I learned how to be exalted. I learned how to be a base. He said, whatever state I'm in, I learned to be. That's it. He said, sufficient is today. Who went? I, I mean, I, be honest, I don't live my life based off of just today. I try to look further ahead on things. But believe it or not, sufficient is today. And a lot of times, that's what burn us out so quick. Because we so far ahead of ourselves. I don't know how you're going to live four months from now. You ain't even got through the day. This day here just started when the Shemar went down. And you telling me you already set up for four months from now? Who gave you that assurance? Because you know what? We mix in with people like that. The people we mix in with, they made plans. Already. If people don't already plan stuff for next year, and I ain't condemn them for the fact I'm a man. I do the same thing, typically. We'll set up things. We do things. But we can forget the, the best I can give you is what I got right now. The best commitment I can give you is what I'm doing right now at this second. Because every second is present. The people that die, you ain't going to believe when they die in a second. How, if, how long can you go without breathing? Hold on for a minute. <laughs> Where the hell you get that watch from? <laughs> no, he said six minutes. You can't go without breathing for six minutes. Six minutes. He <laughs> said shoulders off. Show, yeah, somebody said let him choke you for five minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> six minutes. No, I think you're dying three. I think you go three minutes without that. Six minutes, yeah, hell, you ought to be brain dead. Three minutes, you're dead. Three more minutes, your brain should be dead. <laughs> Ain't no air in it. I don't know, I think three minutes. Boss, y'all look it up. How long can you? It might be close to six. Yeah. But you can't go without breathing for what, three minutes? They can bring you back after six minutes, you can be considered brain dead. You, ain't, you can't go no six minutes without breathing. You hold your breath that long, first of all, your lungs gonna explode. Hold on, what you say? I know you can't do it. No. Hold on. He said people that do it for five minutes. I get them down in Mexico that swim over here with you in the sun. 
Now you go through the sewer, you gotta be able to hold your breath long because you're gonna be going through so much poop, you get an extra two minutes. What did what, 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 what the survey say? Four to six minutes. White man gonna say he's six minutes. Say, permanent brain damage is only four minutes. I guarantee they ain't gonna find out. But you don't really, you down a second. You be, if it's four minutes, after three, min, three minutes and 59 seconds, you're still good. That one second is what kill you. Everybody going to down a second. It don't matter what you're going through. You been there. So he was living for three hours when he died. He just died all of a sudden. Yep, that second. I mean, it kill you in a second. That's why you had to really set back. For all of really, we had to consider, man, how, how, how precious our life is. And I'm talking about precious to a point of not us um, um, consoling ourselves about how life is well, but just looking at one person control that. One person control the day that we made it all the way up to this time. If people that got up when we got up this morning, before we got up and after we got up, they done. They didn't make it back home. That was the last time some people seen them. It's over with and they ain't never coming back. You know, eventually in a second, they're gonna be one of our stories. You ain't gonna make it back. That's gonna be it, it's gonna be over with. So we here to make reservation now, because we know we got to move, right? Only makes sense. Somebody come and put a note on your building and say that the building been condemned. You got to get out. You got 24 hours, you got 48 hours, you got one week or whatever you got. What do you start doing? Procrastinating. What do you do? Preparing to do what? The league. So you, so you can live outside? You do what? Guess why we're here? We got a sign on every one of us telling us we're going to have to leave here in a second. So we're here to try to make preparation to have somewhere else to go. It don't make sense to leave from condemned to nowhere. It makes sense to move from condemned to somewhere where we say, I'm looking for something permanent where I don't never have to move no more. That's why we're here. Think about it. I think I need to get everybody a condemned sign and put it. I mean, I need to have something made to get everybody one condemned. You got to move in a second. So you need to make a reservation. You need to try to have you something set up. Every one of us. We don't think about it. A lot of times we don't want to think about it. Why? Then there's responsibility. Then you got to be worried about it. You got to be thinking about it. You need to because it's, em it's imminent and it's going to happen. Every one of us got to do it. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter about your education level. That's the thing about death. It don't discriminate. You can have all the money in the world. You're still going to die. You can be the fastest man in the world. You're still going to die. You can be the fastest swimmer, you're going to die. You can be the smartest person in the world, you're going to die. You can be the greatest mathematician ever, you're going to die. You can be a surgeon, heart transplant, whatever, you, whatever it is you can think of that you can do, you can be the best at it. Highest jumper, uh, longest jumper, whatever it is. Ain't that right? The best pilot ever, you're still going to die. So with all the occupation, all the things that we try to dream up or we try to achieve to do, what's going to save us? Only one thing gonna save her from death. That's Mr. Yahuwah. See, that's this first death that we all have to pass through, everybody gotta do it. A right man and a wrong man. We'll all see each other. Listen, there ain't no separate grave for them. All them go to the same where the book said, do not all go to one place. It's just like all the main, all them rivers and streams, you get on them, they'll take you to the same place. Rivers and streams all around from different places. You know what? They meet up. They all part in the same place. You know why that is? So you realize that the same thing with you and other people. We all going to the same place. We're going to meet up in one place, and that's going to be the judgment. Hello? Yes, Mr. Yahuwah said it that way. When he had all them rivers to sit out and let them flow, they all came back to one place. Isn't that right? And he came in. You know what he did? He divided them. When he sat there and all the Mayim were there, he divided them. You know, like, just like a shepherd does, a rock, or when he sat down with the sheep and the goat. All the Mayim were right there together, and he divided them. He divided and separated them. So let the, that's what he told them. He said, let the rocks come up and divide them. That's, right. that's what they're going to do when they come again. It's going to be a division among us again. Everything we learned in Barashit coming right back around again. All the people are going to be like Mayim, and Mr. Yahuwah is going to come up. He's going to let their rocks divide us. Hello? Yes, okay. Uh, Y'all don't have to. Listen. You don't have to deal with it. You can keep living your fantasy lie, whatever you want to do. That everything going to be all right. It's the summertime and people don't die for summer. Kids get out of school every year. They die at the end of school. 
They get killed during prom time. They get killed at football game. They get killed for homecoming. And some of them don't come back the next year. It just happened. I remember the first time I remember a kid died. I thought I was in the fifth grade. It was out the summer we came back. And um, the girl and her parent, they, was, um, they went on a trip. And um, they went on a trip, and a, a car hit them, hit on a tractor trailer. Her, her brother, her dad had died. Her mother was the only one survived. She just had a broken arm. They went on a vacation. She the only one survived. She lost everybody. I remember that so clear in the field grade and they told us about it. It just was shocking. You know, as a kid, you know, everybody pretty much living. Y'all kids, kids, don't you think kids don't die? But you will let you know. Yes, they do. Like the first time I knew about a kid dying, I know it was in the fifth grade. You start considering, man, what would happen? How would that happen? They, they just gone. I started looking at being a car. I tried to, when I was a kid, I tried to look to make sure if I could see, if I see something come back, I could try to avoid it. And you try to be wise on one end, but you'll be dumb on another one. You can't do anything. He told you in the day of your death, ain't no discharging in it. You can quit, get out of anything you want, but the day of your death, you won't get out of that one. How many of y'all done got out of stuff before? Trouble, situation, maybe bills or paying something. How many of y'all got a, got a relationship? See that? Look how smooth we are. He said, I'll let you get that one, but you will not get out of the day of your death. So we got the sign. We know we've been condemned. The book has already condemned us on our behavior. So now we're trying to just get us somewhere else to go. That condemnation let her know you can't stay there. Just like Adam was sitting in the garden. He let him know you've been condemned. You can't stay here. <clears throat> Y'all hear that? He looked at it. It's run. That's what condemn is run. How many women wear stockings? You get a big old long, big old long tail going out. What is that called? That mean you can still keep wearing them? Does it get better if you keep wearing them? Now, I know a trick you can do when it's small. You can take some clear fingernail polish and run it down. How many of y'all know about that? Oh, they know about it. They ain't know I knew about that. Now, hold on, let me say this now. Are you decide I've done some of that? Hell no, I ain't never want no stocking. <laughs> Hell no, but I know, I, I know about some of everything, though. I can't use that when that's how I'm done. Be, no, no. I ain't never want no stocking. Now, on my head back years ago, we would try to get away. You had to wait on your mama. You had to wait on them. Have a little damn foot in your head. <laughs> Go to school like your mom been stumbling your head. <laughs> yeah, they'd be waiting on I didn't get one of them stockings. You can cut that thing and try to get your way. Them way cap. They're like, hell no, them thing, them thing was four or five dollars back then. Four or five dollars. That billion gas money, man. Ain't got no money for wrap on here. Go to school look like you got them. Like somebody wrapped wrap the water hole around your skull. No. We weren't interested in that. I know a lot of them they probably still wear them now. Circulation cut out, can't breathe, waking up in the middle of the night praying. Condemn, oh. condemn, condemn. <laughs> man, I, pr I pull out to I can't have that thing on my head, man. It ain't worth it at the end of the day. Four, but yeah, I, I be thinking, I'm like, I don't know what you're doing that night. It must, it must, I, I guess someone will be hit, but at the end of the day, it don't change that. I can't do it. I'm a praying man. I wake up in the spring, I wake up and go to the bathroom at night. And I, gotta, I don't have my eye open, I got to pray. Because that little toe get caught in the end of that bed. It's going to be a turd that long on that floor. Somebody got to clean it up. So I had to pray. How many of y'all go to the bathroom with your eyes closed? That tight. I'm going to tell you now. I did have to open up the other night. All pen ain't here nothing hit. I said, oh, hell. Make sure I ain't no mess. I, loved it. I was in a good spot, though. I said, that's, that's good to know. You got to know when you open your eyes now. You know you're releasing, and you don't hear nothing. You ain't that high up in the air. That's that flow getting pissed on. <laughs> oh, now everybody here perfect. Y'all got to kill me, all these perfect people. Ain't nobody made no mistake. <laughs> Did anybody want to confess anything? Somebody can say, I too have missed. Yeah, I know that. I mean, you're human. But at the end of the day, though, I tell you what, though, y'all be considering through the Yoon and through the Layla. You can get up. He lets you get up to go. I just, I just go and get him to her law. I just had to go ahead and get her due. Little stuff, you get older, you realize, if for my age, they can't walk, they ain't stroke now, everything else. You just realize, that should have been me. Now, you, you listen. It ain't got no age. He don't discriminate now. He'll come and get in. Hey, he ain't got nobody. He's talking, well, they kind of too young. 
Nope. I'll come get them too. I heard Lil Williams say, Lee Williams said, he'll come get the baby right off your breast. Baby sitting down, suck. He said, baby done started and fell asleep. Damn Skippy done fell asleep. Ain't gonna wake up no more either. Ain't never miss you who? Man, you gonna lay your baby down in that crib. Y'all heard the crib there. They don't even talk about that no more. Baby was going down, baby folk done putting them babies in them crib. Come back, that baby dead. Listen, man, man, that crib done took a lot of babies. People forgot, look at, cause we got out, we be forgetting, we forgot about, y'all, do y'all know about that crib? You don't hear them words, but don't talk to them crib them. You remember they talking to crib them? What they call Sid? That's what they try to call him. Yeah, Sid. I went to school with a guy named Sid. <laughs> His brother accused me of selling him some fake dope. I don't like my name getting thrown around like that either. I am not perfect. <laughs> you know what that means. <laughs> y'all all right? So I've been around a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. Whatever they want to call it, that crib, that man come get you in your sleep. I'd be glad to wake up. Man, let me come up. But he let me go. I don't, if he pick, he let me pick now. I don't mind if I'm asleep. Deep sleep and go. I'd rather not be up doing that. You know what I'm saying? And have me choke and all that coughing and stuff. But how it go? I, like, he let me pick one. I take one of them nice little, let me just sleep one. Ain't that right? And move me straight up and wake up. And I'd be right there going with him. Transfer, that's what I like. But you don't ever know how we gotta go. Cause at the end of the day now, the book declared in the sixth chapter of the book of Kazun, they call Revelation. When they set up on the altar and they were asking Yahuwah how long? How long for he avenge them? He said to the rest of you are king. said till they moot the same way. That book said, oh folks, that was beheaded. They were slain for it. So they're gonna come down to it now. We might very well have to be slain for what we believe. Christians don't have to worry about that. What killing you is your stupidity. You too dumb to open your eyes to realize you're going the wrong way. And that's another death. You know, that's a that's a, that's a senseless death. Y'all know that? Cause some stuff you shouldn't have to die for. Hello? You ain't gotta die and be stupid. You would think as long as we've been going in the world, that somebody had enough sense to sit down and open a dictionary. Look at the book, look at the date at the front of the book, look at where the book came from and go look at the book it came from and see all the inaccuracy and realize why are we still using this book? When they do, they're going to get called a heathen, a devil. They don't want to be saved. Satan himself because you just messed up on by the money. Now you're a major preacher got to do work and he got to go and get intelligence and he got to sit down there. He can't keep hiding under the darkness and under the shadow of this is what my granddaddy did, and this is what they did before us, and, and this they did, and I ain't going to move. They just say that stuff at True Dirt over there. They call it True Church. It's, it's a true church. It's true dirt. That's what they believe. Whatever bitch you can tell, that's the same thing they're going to teach. Even my farm pastor told me, he said, he told me, he once said, he told me, he said, you know how much stuff done changed since he done died? And the knowledge he had at that time, the book in the clan, 11 chapter, what, 11? 11th chapter of the book of Daniel, that media clan, the book said knowledge was going to increase. It can't stay with one person. It's going to increase because more things are going to happen. And more things happen, the more people's eyes are going to become illuminated to things. When these people preach a lot of time, you think these people would have ever, just think about uh, during the time everyone when Ain Smith in the 60s or 50s. In the 50s, did you ever think we would ever have a country where gays were running? Homer said, you ever thought, Uncle Dad, did it ever come to your mind one day men going to be able to marry men and women going to be able to marry women? And they're going to teach it in school. and they, Nobody could imagine that. So what not did the preachers had back at that time? They were preaching more about Sodom and Gomorrah had homosexual. Ain't about, they probably got way more sense than Sodom and Gomorrah. Man, here, Sodom and Gomorrah, man, they got about two good sins at the bed. These sins, they're to top anything they got. These damn things coming out there, shut Simon and Gamora down. And all, here's a raining man. They'll <laughs> tear it up. Man, them sisters tell us, hey, man, man we see, man, we see, y'all some damn baggage. <laughs> I'm telling you, that'd be bad. That'd be an argument, too. And then you hear, we what bad, though. They don't want you to call, sisters are arguing, and they'll call each other faggots. You try to look at the thing, saying, They're like, man, who cares? You, you black nigga? You a black nigga? You're like, White man just saying, look at that. I'm just trying to figure this out. Do y'all know something that I don't know? That's crazy. They'll get the argument and call you, you gay sissy. Like, wow, that's an argument? 
<laughs> I mean, well, what else could you be? They know it wrong. That's what I want you to call them by. The world know it wrong. And we got to get these boys, get these boys out of these skinny pants and all that stuff. Y'all know when they get them skinny pants, they want to cut your, cut your groins off. That ain't nothing but they ain't nothing but another circumcision. And got the man that castrating the man balls. He done. I mean, he, I'm telling you, cook him up. I'm telling you, something else y'all do a lot. Watch them phone and them tight pants, them phone right against your skin burning. Y'all do know they already found a study. That phone is cooking up your semen. Okay. Yeah. I know. They, everybody pocket carrying them. I'm trying to tell you, I better carry it. Loosen up them things. But along with the carry, I'm just telling you, all in your pocket laying him, that thing just cooking up. That razor just cooking them up. All right, they're trying to tell you now. So they come up down there with a little shish kebab. Come in. So they already cooked. They put them on a the stick. All right, they're trying to tell you. The women get them and stick them in their bra. Now heat your titty milk up for you. I'm just thinking about being with these phone. Where we try to put them at? Where we can hold them. Instead, get your earpiece, get them. I try to tell you, folks, man. And have that thing, yeah, that damn thing be cooking your ear. No time that they don't already found folks that got brain problems with them phones. Hold on, my head be hurt. Man, you got too much going on. I do an earpiece. Y'all do that? Or you can do a speaker, keep that. Like I said, or get the cord, put it up. But putting that damn thing up on my face, cooking my, that thing, cooking your face up. I be, I be telling them, I said, I don't know how y'all do it. I'm not holding that damn thing up getting my face. And, and it's so heavy. It don't look like it. Now, you man, I remember before they had them earpiece, you hold them phone, all them things were so light. Soon they got an earpiece, like the damn thing about to break your arm. You're like, oh, now I got to put this thing, it's so heavy. Damn thing, away with a couple of them. That is psychotic. I remember y'all mean hold for them EOP, you can hold that phone and go to work. Now you try, you got that EOP, they don't arm just break. You be like a damn sister, wrist be broke. You can't play with it now. They listen, they program us so bad, we don't lost all our strength. We ain't got no intelligence. So I'm gonna try to talk and see if I can help us get something. How about that? Yes, all right, we'll get ready to sign this Kato Sarah. <sighs> all right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We had a subject we were talking about on uh, like last Wednesday. We didn't get to finish talking about it. Come back to my mind for a reason. Got to be. Romans 15 and 4. Why we use this? Foundation. That's right, our foundation. When you build, what's the first thing you got to have? Foundation. That's right. Ain't that right? That's, this whole building, y'all see that building? It's all being supported by a foundation. That's how it's able to go up. You can't go up till you get a foundation. Y'all know that? So that makes sense why Yahushua came down. And he had to, before he could go back up, he had to say he had to, he had to establish a foundation. Makes sense why he went to the went to the lowest parts of, of Shamaim. I mean the lower parts of the rocks. He was established. As he told the man, if he's gonna build a bed, he said he gotta dig what? Deep. That's why he had to go into the heart of the rocks. He said, I'm building, I'm gonna build a house. If I'm build a house, then I got to lay a foundation. So when, when we look at us, when we moot, what are we looking at it being? Symbolism to Digging deep. Noon. Yeah, that's one. What are we looking at? Let's start what we just talked about. That's time. What are we just talking about? Foundation. Wow. And what do we say that he did? He dug deep to do what? To build a foundation. So we're going to be going into the rocks too, right? So we're trying to set up a foundation. Y'all need to know why. I mean, it all needs to make sense. If you're going to build, you got to build a foundation. And to, build a, to lay a foundation, you got to dig. I pour houses, I build houses. That's a trade I got. You got to build a foundation. You got to dig to put a foundation down. And your foundation got to be to support what you're going to put, what you're going to construct upon it. 
That's how you go up. How y'all think Yahushua went up? The foundation was laid. Hello? That's the same thing that Shaul said. He said, other foundation can know each laid than that which is laid. He said, which was who? He said, that's Yahushua. He said, everybody needed to be careful how you build their pun. He said, come you do. He said, it's going to be tried with fire so I can see what sort it's of. Hello? I mean, look at the walls of Jerusalem. What happened to those? They were burned. And he went and got new rocks. What did he do? He put the same rock. What they told you? That man right there, he ain't suffering no law. It's still, it was still able to stand. It got tried. He told you every word going to be tried by fire to see what sort it was. Jerusalem walls were burned. And Nakum Yah put it back with the same rocks. Why? Because they've been tested. What, what are the rocks? We're the only people that burn. We're going to say get rid of why? Because it done been through something. In, in the other words, that's what we should have used. Because that one that been tested. It been tried. That's what he's going to look at us. Why would he pick us for the in his mouth coup when everybody been there been tried? What are your tests? What's your accomplishment? What defeats you? I'll help you out. See, when, when stuff comes, a lot of times we'll look at it being um, a strike against us, a hate. It's him punishing us for something. Why you can't be tested and tried to see where your law is at? Who your confidence in? It's nothing to put your confidence in, man. But they're going to fail you. Hello? So our goal, and his goal is to get us to put our confidence in him. How that's going to happen if I got everything? I got it. Try to help me with this. I got it. Try to help me with this. I got it. I'm good. I don't need no help. I don't need no help. So why am I, so let me ask you, so why am I going to, what's going to get me to trust him? I got it. Y'all see clearly people try to help me. Didn't y'all try to help me? But I told you I got it. I got the thing under control. So what do you got to let happen to me? This got to get out of control. I got to just straight lose it. Just so I can realize, so you ain't got it. Now, how you going to get it? Now, I got to seek him. I start seeking now. Y'all got what I'm saying? So now, first down, look at If I just lost it, it's because he hate me. It's because nothing ever works out for me, and he always against me. And I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. As soon as I start doing good, as soon as I get where I can stand on my own, as soon as I start making what happened? Every time. That's why I don't even try to make it. When, why, is it he, why isn't it that he's just trying to make sure I don't lean and trust on myself more? See, what will count to be a bad thing ain't always a bad thing. Not if it turned, even Shah who said, if it worked in my salvation. If that happened, every time I stand up, I get knocked down. Every time I get to going, I get stopped. But it makes me look to him. It makes me get right and be dependent on him. Was it a bad thing or was it a good thing? Same thing happened when it came down to uh, Yahusa. Every time he started, he, every time he was doing good, what happened? Some happened. So what? Surely you who hated him. Come on. You going again to our king some good news and tell him about some stuff and that thing you know, you wind up in a grave? You who against you? Then you get sold off from one to another one. Then you get over here, you get a job, you start moving yourself up. Somebody talking about making you a supervisor. You're like, man, I'm moving. Then you get knocked down again. Got locked up and then got some rape charge. You know you can't. A rape on your feather. That's the worst feather you want to have. I don't know what you got. I call you to sell drugs too. What you got rape? Ooh. Yeah. We ain't gonna be able to. Now, when I got women around here, one of them get raped, but they say you touched them. I'm going to have to fire you. And the man still got out from prison and got exalted up, and he was the second high ruler in Mizraim. Now, what if he just saw his life the way we see it? Nothing work out. Nobody like me. My own family against me. Everybody against me. Folks on the job against me. Every time I'm doing good, something happened. Nothing work out for me. And, but he waited on me. Look where he got him. Second high ruler in Mizraim. I want all of us to reassess how we look at stuff. Stop taking everything in here against you. If it gets you anywhere the way you start to call on him and look to him more, that's the best thing could have happened to you. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Right at this moment, I'm not sick. Okay? Not sick. 
I want y'all to, um, I'm just pray right quick. If you would, hear me right now. Touch me. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, make me feel better. Do what you do, you know, touch me with your finger love. Hear me with your power. Do what it is you do and all that stuff you be doing for other people. Do that for me. Who know why I pray like that? Hmm? Ain't it me? I don't need it. It's just baby, just, you know, just say it because that's what you're supposed to say. I don't want to say it because that's what you're supposed to say. I want to say it because that's what I want. Everything I ask for, that's what I want. When I pull out, all my pull out are saying, because that's what I want. Hello? So sometimes to get up most sincere and I pull out, he'll touch you. He'll move something. He'll make something happen because then it'll make you consider. But the first thing we do, we look at it as a strike against us. And not a strike against you. You know what I mean? People, he let, let go. Ain't nothing happened to them. That's what Daoud said. He said they, their strength is firm. He said they have no bands. He said a band holds you back. Not they ain't have no flute and no drums or nothing. No, he said they don't have no restriction, nothing to hold them. But he's looked at the Sadiq, how stuff work out for them. He look at these people like, look at these people. Then he realized these people here soon they go down. Soon they coming back. He, he's taught just like we do, letting us know. I see these people, and yeah, it bother you. Look at man, stuff just be working out for them. Even when stuff bad is good for them. You know, even a bad or coming is a good or coming. You make money. You send it. Hell, you talking about? That's crazy because they've learned how to set their life to a system and they had learned how to follow the system of Elohim. So it worked for them for a reason because that's what they're hard at. Listen, you know, listen, you can run hard after anything and get it. Even I, I'm being with you. You ain't got to be saved to obtain that here. Please don't, don't let nobody tell you if you want to get stuff in life, get saved. That is a lie. How you think all these people, so the people that own all these businesses are saved. All these people in position around the world are saved. Is that what we're going to tell ourselves? Because that's going to be a lie, okay? These people have a lot of things they have because they are willing to commit themselves even to denying him. That's how they get. They'll deny him. They will deny him. And to them, they rather get what they got now. They rather take their chance on what they got now. I'm going to take my chance on what he say he's going to do. I'll take what he give me for now, but I don't want that to be my reward. Y'all got it? I'll use it as a tool, but I wouldn't trade that for no reward from him. Y'all got it? But every now and then, he got to let some rain fall in everyone I like, just so we consider how easy, how delicate our lives are, how, how easy things can be out of your control, how easy you can be moved out of the way. It has to happen that way. What is going to keep us consistent? Once, okay, you say right now, there's nothing can go wrong. Let's go with that scenario. Nothing goes wrong. Nothing can go wrong. We're going to just go with this as a scenario. You're saying nothing can go wrong. Everything from this point on here on out is right. Right, happy, and just work for your good. You will forget him. You will forget him. Part of the reason is why he let stuff come. Even Yahushua, in the 30th chapter of the book of um, um, Marshall Lee, when he spoke, the writings about him, he told him about that. Don't let him be too rich. You know what he said? Yeah. I will forget. <laughs> but you know me, Not me, though. No. Uh, you who I'll never forget. Man, give me $19 billion. <laughs> Man, I've been stopped thinking about him. <laughs> you who or who. When I can go anywhere in the world by whatever I want in the world. When I want in the world, and you think I'm thinking about my salvation, and I'm thinking about a God that come down. What am I praying to ask him to do? If I need a kidney, I go to a third world country. I pay some people, and they kill them until they get my blood type. You poor people pray. Whatever they want, they get it. They crash companies. They crash a company. They, crash, they move the country. That's why they, why you get rich people move to small town because they know they crush them with what they got. And like, hell, I got more money than the whole town. Who can arrest me? Who can stop me? So their God is in themselves. So he allow us to obtain a few things and lose some things just so we realize, just like Nebuchadnezzar said, 
Ain't that right? The Most High Yah ruler in the Malkuth of Allah, and he give it to whom he will. He give it to whom he will. Ain't nobody got none on their own by their own smarts. That's because he gave it to you. And he'll let you have it and let you use it just long enough that he come back and say, how many of y'all got a son? Y'all know how many people praying for a son? Y'all know if people praying for a son? Praying to have a son. Can y'all believe that? Praying. You know what they say? I, I, I just pointed, I'll do anything for a son. If Yahuwah will give me a son. And Yahuwah is going to grant those people what they ask. Not all. Some. And you know what he's going to do when he do it? He's going to take somebody else's son. He said, that's how it works. I'm going to take it from somebody else. Or oh, it's going to come out their wife womb. It's going to come out their wife womb. But I assure you, he's going to take a son from somewhere else. Hello? Wow. Wow. Yahuwah wanted his son from Mizraim. Do y'all not remember that? He said, Yasharal is my friend, my Ben. He said, that's my son. He told him to let him go. And he did get him to release him after he killed his son. That was the only way it was going to work. He told Mushaw, you said you can go ask him, but he already did the numbers. He told Mushaw before he went, he said, do me a favor, go tell him to let my son go. And when you get ready to start, he said, listen, he's not going to do it. Not until I work all my wonders. When I work all my signs, he said, then he'll let him go. You know, he realized, this man will kill my son in order to get here. This man had one son, and he killed every firstborn baby in there. He said, that's the way it took to cover him. In order for me to get mine, I had to kill yours. He did the numbers. He did the math. What y'all going to do with it? Most people do number. They do bidding. They sound. They do number. They do percentages. Chick-fil-A. What are name brand companies out here? Taco Bell. Fire Guy. You know what these folk do? They do numbers. How many cars ride down this street over a course of hours or minutes? And you know what they do? They do what they call predictions. If I'm getting... 500 cars riding on this street in a minute. Surely, I should be able to get 30 of them. If I can get 30 of these cars out of 500 on the minute, out of every minute, that's how I do my numbers. That's how a lot of these people do it. They do their numbers. They're going to look at traffic flow. They're going to look at, they will never go open one and put in the desert. QT either. Listen, man, everywhere you see a QT, cars be everywhere. Hell, that's because cars already were there. Nobody going no damn way for no QT. I'm going to drive to the damn desert looking for a QT. I just got to go because wherever QT put the business what cars already there. It just looked like it. Man, as soon as a Q, none of these people go out of their way. These people already travel in the vicinity. And some people will go who wouldn't go because they see other people that they've been drawn and attracted by. That's how you who will draw us. Everybody see us coming to him, guess what happened? He said, let your light so shine that who? Might do what? See, they'll see your work, and they'll come. That's why these people, look, they put lights up, don't they? So when people see that, they say, mm, let me pull over here and get something to eat. They pull it in there. They see everybody else. It must be good. That's why these people keep these illuminated signs at night. Hello? That's the lights on their rocks. That like he told you, well, use a lampstand right here on their rocks. And they were supposed to see you, and you were supposed to attract them. See, people learn your, the strategy he put together for you, and they use it with business. And they see, they show you it works what he told you. Yeah. Only people that got a problem understanding how he does business is his own people. Because we're so fixated on ourselves and our situation that we forget about he has a plan that's bigger than us. The plan don't involve just us individual. The individual he uses, how he uses individually, is to draw other people through means of what they see us do. How they see us overcome and adapt from things. Y'all got it? That's how he use it, but then how he gonna attract other people you won't be used. I got a restaurant. 
I got a closed sign, no lights, no menu. I'm trying to wonder why mine ain't doing what McDonald's are doing. Because they're racist. That's the only reason people can't be coming, because they're racist. They know it's black owned. It's got to be. That's it. That's all it is. Somebody is, is preying on me and telling people not to come to my restaurant because they know it's black owned. Because they know when people come, I'll be just a big at McDonald's, Kentucky Fried. That's the only reason they're coming. And that only reason they're not coming? You don't have nothing to track them with. Well, we try to move on. All right, let's see. Listen, this is the word program for those that want to follow. Come on, listen. For whatever Nika taught before, Nika taught for our alumni. The teacher to show us, the instructors to show us, did we see C twice? Did we see twice? Did we see C twice or did we see one time? To show us, to teach us, and to instruct us. Those are the three things that the writings were set for to do. To show us, to teach us, and to instruct us, okay? That's the purpose. If he told you it was a lamp, what does a lamp have to do? Shine, <clears throat> illuminate. So how do you get a lamp to shine? Put a bulb on it? Have to lighten it. That's what you do with a teacher does. They enlighten you. So if you are a lamp, the job of the Ra'a is to enlighten you. <clears throat> See, there are a lot of, there's a lot of principal things you have to learn, elementary things you have to learn first. That's what it is. A teacher enlightens the students on information they didn't know. All right? So that's the purpose of what the scripture do. It's giving us the information about things we didn't know, things we need to know. That's your instruction. When it starts to instruct you, it starts to delegate. This is how it has to be done. Y'all got it? So that's when, when you know that, then you, you, you kind of set and prepare yourself for how the information is going to be given to you. A lot of times you got to teach All right, quick, everyone pull out your books. Get your pens, start writing. For what? This sounds like you mad at us, no? You need to tell us exactly what you're doing. So that gives the enthusiasm behind getting the pencil, getting the paper, preparing myself to write. Because now I know I'm about to get some knowledge I need to know about. Y'all got it? Hey, y'all had professors, anybody like that? Just get in. Pull that pad, and that, that really got you going then. Oh, I'm ready for this. I've been waiting on this. Huh? Instead of kind of introducing what they're about to get ready to do. Getting you where there's an excitement for it because you understand this is some knowledge that you're going to get, that they're going to impart on you, that you're going to be able to use even after the class. A lot of information they get is just good for the class. Some of that stuff you'll never use in life. Yeah. They're like on tests. Everything on that test, you will never, it's most of the stuff on the test you'll never use in your life. It's just put there just to throw you off. Yeah. Have you studied a book this big for 20 questions? <laughs> no, good one. Some of the stuff you read, it was really, why you just let me study stuff I need to know? Because guess what? It's, it's actually not used in the way the book, everything in the book is needful. A lot of stuff they give you, it's a deterrent. Yep. I don't know if I heard it, just like practice. It's stuff you're doing practice. <laughs> How many suicides you did in the game? <laughs> How many times you stood and just keep jumping up? How many times you did in the game? Nobody do it. But it's, you know what? It's, you start to pull out people who want to be there. Yeah. People who want to be there, they'll do what it takes in order for them to be on, and be on that court. I want to know how bad you really want to be. I said, going to test you. Just like being saved. There are some things he's going to give you. It's to prove out whether or not you want to do this. Some people are only there for the good times. Oh, put some of them on the bench and see if you keep them. Get a star to pull them out and put them on the bench. Just set them down. Some of them turn the equipment after that game. Tony O'Brien showed you how he worked out, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Let you know, I'm only here if I can play. Randy Moss showed you too, didn't he? They got a plan to realize, don't throw. They start to read. Randy going to run. They already know. Don't get it. Randy realized he wasn't getting the ball. He stopped running. They tell me, why you ain't running? He said, ain't going to throw the ball to me. So you just hurt us. First chance we're going to trade. You know what everybody said? Man, he crazy here. They trade Randy Maul. Randy Maul the better friend. If he ain't a team player, he ain't the best. I really get a man a team player. Because the object here to throw them all. Hell, the people, listen, they trying to read schemes. Once I see you ain't running, you out to play. Then they're doing something different. You just gave away a play. Verse ahead, you ran. I got three defenders trying to catch you. Everybody trying to block y'all. You just open up the way for somebody else. But since it wasn't about you, I ain't going to do it. So you're like, this is a guy here. Your ass need to be gone. Get you out the team. How many of y'all agree? You get away a scheme. I can't use you. 
It's a lot of times. You had a lot of good players that got cut in front of them. Why they got rid of them? I can't use you. You pout too much. You're going to pout. I can't use you. I can't use you. Sometimes I take it. I just want to see where you're at. No, no, I don't want to see you at. You start that pound shit, take him out, cutting the fool on the side. Yeah, I got to get rid of him. Just let Cody ignore you, Cody. We got the game. Just let you just do your thing. I guarantee they think about it. I got to get rid of you. I got to get rid of you. You'll hurt the team. Team is just that. You know what I'm saying? It's a team. You can build around a person, but you got to learn how to operate as a team. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. A lot of people know how to play. They don't know how to operate as a team. There's a lot of great people. I know a lot of guys great. You know what? They can't work as a team, though. Nope. And that's why they didn't make it. You see them in the video play. Oh, they great. You say, man, you ought to be somewhere playing somewhere. No, you shouldn't. You're not a team player. Hello? I remember one time we went down there. <laughs> we were shooting at LA Fitness. And I, I, um, I didn't want to play. I let somebody take the spot. He got that ball. He got that ball. He's just checking that damn thing up. <clears throat> I said, I said, stop, stop. I said, come on the court. He said, what? I said, come on the court. He said, what? I said, man, you, 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 he thought, I'm a shooter. I said, you're not no shooter. You're missing. <laughs> you can't, every time he touched the ball, he was shooting. You remember that time? He was pissed. He couldn't play, though. I, he was done. He said, you can't do that. I just did it. Yeah, come on the court. I'm like, you kidding me? Look, they saw that thing hit a hand. Yeah, that shit missed. He back down again. He tell me, I'm a shooter. I assure you, nobody's stopping no shooter. Who starts a game because a shooter hitting? <laughs> no, you're not no shooter. I don't know who told you that. You got to go. <laughs> he will hurt, too. But it's the truth. You start watching people, you realize you, you're detrimental. You need to come on. I have seen people like you before. In your mind, you don't watch too many damn films somewhere. And somebody done ripped him up. He done went somewhere with some blind people. Ain't got no hands. And he shot. They said, man, you good. None of them guys had hands. None of them guys got eyes. They don't know you hit the bottom of the net. They thinking, whew, that's the bottom. Well, that's another story. So this, this is what's important for, for whatever. So we're looking at for whatever, what, they said so ever, what things so ever were written, could talk, we could talk for our learning to show us, to teach us, to instruct us. So it would enlighten us so we can be the lampstand, so it can attract other people to him. That through endurance. What is, what's the long definition? Wow. So you recited. Yeah. Marshall Lee is the short. What's the long? That's important for you to realize that. Going through without giving way. See, sometimes the shortcuts will remember. You want to know the long way before you take a shortcut. That's how you know it's a shortcut. Sometimes people run a shortcut, they don't know the real. It ain't a shortcut. You start off on a shortcut. They say, man, it take a long time. So if this is a shortcut, it's because you don't know the long way. <clears throat> You teach a math a shortcut, they don't realize that thing, man, it take too long. This is the shortcut. Let me teach you the long way. So you learn the long way, you learn the short way. When he brought my Mizraim, he said he could have brought them what? And how did he bring them? Long. That way they'll know a shortcut. <laughs> do do y'all understand how all that worked? He said, I could have brought them a shorter way. He said, but they would have fainted. You know when they'd have fainted? When they saw the long way. It's too much. I can't take it. So I'm going to take you the long way. Now you're going to see the shortcut. Hello? Do you know what that was purpose for? Hello? For our learning? Yeah. And that's how we were able to understand what Yahushua was doing. That's how we was understand what he was doing. We understood the shortcut because we knew the long way. Hello? He made the sun stand still for the space of a whole day. Hello? We would count days by the hours. He never counted by the hour. He did it from the time that it was dark till the sun came, Shamash came up, till it went back down. That was a day. That was not a time limit. It was from when the sun, when it was dark, the sun comes up, then it's dark. That's a day. Yahushua went up on the two, and it got dark. That's why I could take him down like that. That was a day. Wow. Okay. So we understood the shortcut. He told you, you who will say he was going to take a shortcut. And he said, we're going to still be right. That's how we had to understand it. You had to learn the long way first before you knew the short way. Hello? 
That's why he was able to tell us to come unto him, all of us that were burdened and what? Heavy laden. And I'll do what? Give him rest. That's right. Till we weren't going to rest until the work was over. He had to finish your day's work. So he let us know, I came to relieve you. He is shortcut. You don't have to work as long as you have. You don't have to work as hard as you've been working. So he came to give us a shortcut and it still be right. And he let you know, take my yoke upon it and do what? Let me show you. Let me teach you. Hello? Let me instruct you so you'll see. Hello? Because he told you to come, my yoke is what? Yeah. And now who can he sell that? Who can he sell that to? How can I sell that to you? My yoke is easy, my burden light. Why would you buy that from me? That's my sale pitch to you. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Exactly. That's why he told him to come unto me, all you that are. And? <laughs> See that? Who going to come? Who I'm going to sell that to? Somebody sleep, cow lacking, reclining? He's not going to buy no shit like that. I got to get it to somebody who's stressed out. Somebody who's at wit end and can't take no more. They're their last straw. That's what I'm trying to sell my pitch to. Because guess what they're looking at? I take anything easier than this. I definitely want some lighter. But you let them know, but you're going to learn of me. I'm not just going to give it to you now. You got to learn of me. There's a cause involved with it. You're going to have to learn. You got to be instructed. You're going to be shown. Y'all got it? Okay. I'm going to make sure we got it. Understand it. Okay. All right, let's see. And? Nakum. Reward. That's what he called a consolation. A surprise. It's a reward. And the reward comes with us not giving away. Y'all here not giving away when stuff comes. It's stuff coming. Let me tell you something. This, this, is what, this is what happened with us. The average of us in here went fading that big. Not traumatically big. That's like the same line in line with some in the book. Because then we'll say, you know what? This happened in the book. This is the same exact thing. And that's why you won't get tested with it. It'll test you with something else. That you won't see so much similar in the same way in the book. And it'll test you to an end where you just see it's not in your favor. It's not for your good. And you'll quit. Sometimes the smaller things will be more traumatic us than the bigger. If someone get a, listen, if someone get a knife cut, you say, ooh, man, that can hurt. You say, ain't man. But get a little damn little cut from a pencil, uh, from that paper, damn that thing be, <laughs> it is small one sometimes that'll bother you more than the big ones. It's the smaller things sometimes that'll give us more trauma. You'll be surprised, it'll, some of us will find it the small things. Cause it'd be so minute, it seemed like it shouldn't even be happening. This shouldn't even be, this don't even make no sense. Yes it does. I need to see where you at. On the bigger and the little, all that got to be tested. Nobody, listen, nobody word is in, nobody in here word is good. He got to see it. How many of y'all think this unfair? Whatever you say, he got to see it. How many of y'all here, you say you're a harvest? Think about it before you raise your hand. Please don't just raise your hand. How many of you in here, the adults, because the kids going to raise their hand because they really don't understand, are harb him? Think about it before you put your hand up. Do you a harp him? If you do, raise your hand. Now, if I don't want to raise a hand, I raise mine. Got three of them. Now, let me tell you how they work. He said that he was an Elohim and he said he did something. What is it? He said he didn't do. He changed not. I just gonna take a word for that. What you said? Who said that? I do what now? <coughs> Gotta see it. So when we put our hand up and say we are harvesting, he good with that? Just what I put our hand up. I gotta see it. That's all he's looking for. I just need to see it. And the only way I'm gonna see it is if I put you in a difficult situation or a simple situation and see what moves you. Hello? I just need to see what move you. I hear what you're saying, but I want to see it. And a lot of times we just say we do think, then we get tested. Guess what happened? I should have known. I raised my hand, said I love, love. Now all of a sudden, look like everything started falling apart. It ain't falling apart. I need to see where you at. You say you will haunt me. So you, what, what part of he told me I just took? 
What did he tell y'all you just took? No proof. No evidence of reading. What, what you took? Well, I'll accept it. If you said I accept it. He said, I wouldn't have you to do that. He said, I did mine and told you by two or three witnesses. Now, if I told you that you had to believe somebody by two or three witnesses, then I'm telling you to check me on it. Everything I say, he's saying, check me on it. So how you get to shoot somebody out your mouth and you don't get tested? We don't think like that. That's be for us. We don't think like that. So then our folks said, man, as soon as I said, man, I'm going to do something, I'm going to do Man, it looked like all hell broke off, folks say. You know how they use this terminology. Looked like everything went downhill as soon as I said that. That's what you call it when I'm trying. I got to see where you at. I tested Abraham. I tested people. I even told you to test me and see what I do, what I said. So you just can't shoot something out your mouth and don't think there's not going to be an examination of it. Man, Christian church tell all the time, man, I stop now. Man, I'm telling you, soon as you say you're going to do something for them, soon as you say you look like all kind of stuff, the kitchen sink come at you. And now you let, the, you let Satan come and push you in the end. Now you won't let the man test you to see where you're at. Now how you, you said you want to be saved, but to be saved, you got to be tested. Hello? I feel like, how? Them folks don't take my word on what I said. They come check the foundation. They check, when, well, listen, when I start framing, they come back out. Somebody come and check the framing. When I start framing, they start running wire through. They're going to look at what they've done, electrician done so far. Then I get in, they're going to tell me, you go ahead and insulate. I'm going to get it insulated. When they're going to come back, they want to see the insulation. When they see the insulation up there, they tell me, all right, you can go ahead from here. They said, we'll come back at final. At the final, they come in. They come back through my work. They come back to check everything. We're going to check the foundation. We're going to check the framing coming up. We're going to check the wiring and the rough and plumbing coming in here. We don't check the uh, the drywall. Well, we don't they'll check drywall. When they come again, they check the drywall. They're looking at everything, exterior and exterior and interior. The same thing you who are doing. That's when they give me that's called your final. That's called mosh pot. That's when they give me my CO. Saying you can go ahead and you can go ahead and occupy the building. They, they the one tell me it's inhabitable. I get I, they kept me and have somebody in that house and they gave me no CO. That's it. I just lost everything. Done. Shut it down. You done. Can't nobody have that. They gotta sign off on the same thing with you who are. He got to sign off saying it's inhabitable. Hello? He got to give me a seal. That's what I got to get. Certificate of occupancy. He got to, they got to give me a paper telling me it can be occupied. Because they done checked the foundation. They checked it coming up. They done went through it from the inside. And get what? They ain't going to walk around the outside and say, you good. We got to come inside. Just like Yahuwah. He had to try the reins of your law. He got to check your inward part the same way they do. He got to see where you at. That's what we got to do. And a lot of times, people don't want to be tested, but then how we know you're able to be able to substantiate, you can hold what's coming in. you trying to possess the Ruach Hakadah. How are you going to do that if you haven't been tested? Okay? Uh, Nakum of the well. Your reward. Of the writing. This is where we know our writing. Our reward's coming from the writing. This ain't something you put in your mind and you, fab and you fabricate. It's in the writings. Everything you tell you to do is in our writings. What he told us before was only telling us because it was to show us to teach us and instruct us. So when we're going through, we don't faint. We don't quit. And there's a reward, and you can find it in the writings. And that way you can have an attachment. You can have a connection. That's what we're looking for when we read. We talked about some of um, when what went in the coming sheet. What they call Thursday night. From Wednesday, when they call Wednesday night, it's actually Thursday night, come and sheep. But um, we, I was telling y'all about how um, understanding some certain things that he's saying on the eighth chapter of the book of Yukon. Y'all remember that? How many of y'all don't remember it? That's everybody. Exactly. Everybody don't remember it. I said, I'll come back to it and I'll tell you why. Time kind of failed me on that one. Yukon 9, chapter 8, verse 30. We actually start up about 28. Y'all remember that? All right, let's try up that in. Yeuka 9. Did y'all understand about Hadassah? I'm going to ask y'all to make sure y'all understood it and you have understanding. You know, the, well, I'm sorry. Do you overstand? <laughs> y'all do me a favor. 
Please don't use them stupid uh, comments around here, okay? Please don't use that stupid stuff. I don't understand. I overstand. Don't stop. Stop letting make people make a fool like you and come. You know, and that sounds so good. See, when you say under, that means you under the white man. You got to tell the white I overstand. You overly stupid. Okay? All right, when it comes out of here, word, we're under. Okay? We'll take the understanding. Don't let people beat you up with words and have you thinking, you need to say overstand, my brother. Every time you find these folk, they ain't got shit. Okay? They always broke niggas. Always trying to push this damn psychology around on people that these words that you're using from overstand to understand is that's why you behind. And they don't never have nothing. And they always scamming. I'm yet to find any one of you overstand that ain't scamming. They always got a scam involved. <laughs> that's why they play these word tricks. I don't have time for that foolishness. Isn't that right? My understanding, when we say we understand me, I know what it says. I know what it's saying to me. I know what I need to do. Understanding, okay? That's what we want to make sure we do. So 8 and 28, listen. Yehushua, then, they call John, listen. Then said Yehushua unto them, mm -hmm. when you have lifted up the bend of Adam, then shall you know that I am he, mm -hmm. and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Abba had taught, had lamed me. See that as he instructed me? Let me see what happened. I speak these things. I can't say I speak. He said, just like the Father Abba taught me, these things I speak. That's what he did. So just like when he sent Yahushua, I showed y'all them, um, if I'm correct, um, in, in my memorization, in the first chapter, you're gonna go get in the book of uh, Yahushua. Um, if y'all remember, he told um, Yahushua to come forth. He said, my being uh, Musha was moot. And he let him know, just like when I was with him, I'm gonna be with you. And he taught him what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to take these people over your done. He taught him that. He taught him all this and told him that he would have good success. That was his reward. He told him what the writing said. Musha was moot. This is what Musha was told. What he taught was the same thing. And this is what he gave him. So what was written before by Musha? Guess what it was written for? It was written for Yahushua's learning. And he got in the coom. That's why he told him if he do these things and don't turn, to either side that he was going to have good success. That was his nakoon. It's important for you guys to really understand when you're hearing how this works, okay? This is not a trick, but how people taught us, we more or less subtracted ourselves from it. When you subtract, do you still use those numbers no. that you took away? If I take five from nine, what is it? So I still use five. What happened to the five? It's gone. Why? We don't need it. Took, guess what happened we read? We were doing subtraction. That was for them. That's why subtraction word. If I take four away from five, the five, then the five is dead, right? Because it's four now. So the five don't exist anymore. So I, it's out of the equation. We don't still keep talking about the five, do we? We're going to deal with the number now. It's the four. So I took something away from it. That's how they taught us, and they taught us with the book. When we read, the characters were white. The whole synopsis was white. Everything was outside of you, so you subtracted yourself. So you really didn't have a connection. See, the whole writing was to give you a court, give you an attachment. But you never got that. Quick, come on, let me tell you something. That's okay. That's what we're going to do. We're going to play a game called I'm Not Going to Lie. Okay? You seen your black monkey face in heaven with all them white folk. Go ahead and tell me. Just tell the truth. I ain't gonna, I mean, I'm saying, you know what I'm trying to do? I X my face out of it. I had to just believe I was going outside of it. did not seem natural. It did not seem natural that my black face was going to be sitting in white heaven with white angels and all these white clothes in my black face. I still strive to go, but just looking with my eyes in my mind, it did not make, how many of y'all did? I, it probably did to some of y'all. Did it make sense that you were going to be there with your black face with all them white folks? It made sense to you? No. But you, and, and, the, and the thing was, when I say that, we still strive. I ain't saying we didn't try to strive to go, but you know, in order to do it, you got to see yourself doing it. Like we said, we went to sit flat. 
Who remember when we went to Safe Flag? What did you see yourself doing before you went? You said walking around. What did you see yourself doing? What you know? I can hear you. Sitting. What did you see yourself? Anybody had imagination? Or what, what you had imagination you were doing, Mook? Riding what? Sit, and what did you do when you went down? And that's what, that's because that's what you could see. Could you not see yourself riding a roller coaster? You could see yourself going there. You could see yourself riding it. That was something that you could imagine, put together. It was practical to your imagination. It's an imagination till you do it. Y'all understand that? I had a mama. I told her what I'm gonna do before I went, didn't I? I said, I'm ride, but so right there, Batman. What I said, I'm gonna ride Batman. I said, No, I'm not doing it. My imagination told. Then I was adamant. What not adamant about it? I said, Not doing it. I said, I'm not riding it. My imagination said, boy, this is your reality. You're not riding that thing. I said, Lee, I went to go get a turkey leg. Lee went, Lee said, Lee went. I said, Lee, you rode Batman? Yeah, he said, I shouldn't have rode it. He said, <laughs> Lee said, Lee said, I thought you said, Lee said, I shouldn't have rode that thing. But I'm just saying, and that's something just, this, this is what I want y'all to understand when I'm asking young people. Because in order, your excitement is built off of your imagination, what you can actually see too. You got what I'm saying? You have to be able to see yourself in that, see yourself actually functioning into, okay? And you trying to get me to imagine going to heaven, what's all my views been of it? My hair gonna be blind. No. My hair gonna silk down, and I'm gonna be flying around with some white wings on and a big old white face. But I'm just telling you, people don't want, this way, people don't want to deal with reality. This, and you know it's not practical because of the way they've given you the imagination to it. So it more or less, you have to subtract yourself out of it and you just see them. I'm gonna be looking at them, watching them go. But me seeing myself physically in it don't make sense. Don't make sense. Not off of what I've read and what I know, what I know and who give it to me. Jesus was white. He came between a white woman lead and a white man. Now tell me where my black faith came to that equation from. Let me say this. He had to come out of a race. Okay? So whether it was white, whether it was black, whether it was what they were called Asian, you know, Chinese. The problem become the way it was taught, it was not inclusion. The color is not the problem. It's the whole synopsis of how they give it to us. The whole layout was to exclude and to make one race be the one everyone be subject to. Now, that was the plan of Yahuwah, but in order for people to get themselves from servitude to inheritance, you had to change some of your attribute and it wasn't your skin color. For us, it could never happen because we were black. Didn't matter, you always could be servants but you could never be a Ben. Let's, come on, let's be honest. Tell me how that happened from slavery. How that happened? Tell me, look at your, you know what? You're a master. You're a nigga. Get your ass in that field. Everybody look at them niggas. Tell me, oh, man, you know master? You're a nigga. Get in that field. Shoot that horse. Pick that cotton. Get them beans, Val. I don't know. It just seems so natural. You know what I say? You can see it like sit flat. <laughs> So these are the things we start having to discuss because this is why people don't push and go hard. Because why? I don't really see me being there. So now we learn it's not just the color. They didn't teach it where it was an inclusion. Now us moving from servant, a bot for us, and moving to being son, who's an inheritor, was not color. It was behavior. We had to do the things that a son would do, a Ben would do, okay? In order for ourselves to be able to see ourselves as a recipient of inheriting. All these things had to be things we have. First of all, the first possessor would be the father, okay? He possessed all things, have all things. He got all things. Y'all got it? The son inherited from the father. Y'all got it? Because now it wasn't just the fact that he came from the loin, because there have been sons who came from their father, their father didn't give him nothing. Tell me, Kelly, look at you. Don't do the things that please me. I'm disgusted with you. You're going a totally different way. So the son that became the inheritor was the son they looked at who? 
These, this is the one I can trust. This is the one that's gained my confidence. You got it? This is the one I'll give all things to. Y'all got what I'm saying? Some were passed over by youngers. He said the elder going to serve the younger. So all these things came in to let us know these are not guaranteed. They got religion that people look like us. They're so big on hating white people that they teach it that only black people are going to be saved, which is retarded. Because it's not the color. This is the problem we got. We teach it, we, we taught it so terribly that we even believe the story of everybody Mizraim was white. Just like, them, just like them cracker was in Egypt. Egypt don't exist, cracker didn't exist then. Okay? But they teach it to us in that way. Y'all got it? And you still tying yourself to something back. And you didn't realize he came to release us from. He came to bring us from. The only reason we got this captivity the way we got it now, let's just be honest. What would I have in, in common with my forefathers? If it weren't for this 400 years I'm suffering him. What would I have in common with him? Huh? <laughs> Shaul wrote and talked about his, his, uh, his yoke fellows. Those were people that were in abundance with him. People that going through, we're doing the same work. How y'all think we're going to be bondsmen together if we ain't going through the same thing? I like somebody coming from Beverly Hill trying to talk about a project life. You have no inheritance. You don't have no connection with that. None. So the people that he's looking to come and release and deliver were people that have, been, that have gone through some things. Y'all got it? Even the book said it's called, he's not ashamed to call him my king. Hello? He said we're going to declare his shim in the midst of his Akeem. And in the adult, he was going to see, he was going to share Tahalim. Hello? That's why we were there. He was doing it. What did he say he was going to do? He was declaring his shim. They had his shim wrote up on the tube. That that was Yahushua. The Malacca, the Yahudim. His name meant exactly what it said. The Yah and his Husha, Savior. That was Yahuwah's Savior. He was declaring his shim in the midst. He told you that I come in my father's name. That was just an authority. The father was a savior. Who told you? I'm your, I redeemed you. I'm your savior. But we couldn't see him because that was a, a physical body. We were hearing. We were looking at words on tablets, on scroll, on paper. Then we saw Yahushua. Now we can see clear. Hello? It was a little, that's how light, light means to make clear. That's why Yahushua let him know he was light, yet he was a dog man. See, anytime you make something clear, then that's light. That's how light do. Something that you didn't see that was vague and you got an understanding of it, that's called a or. Y'all got it? And it can be dark, yet it still makes clear. Hello? That's how we understood him. And that's why we look at people use son and say, you know, it's S-O-N, but he the S-U-N. And your mama and M-L. And your daddy. Because these people thinking they're smart, they're really not smart, they don't understand. He made things clear for us. Y'all got it? That's the Shamash. That's not the son. Okay? All right. But it sounds good when you kind of rapping and rolling, son, son. But, it, you know, okay, just the ignorance. But anyway. Now they, they like to try to rhyme it and do stuff like that, make it sound like a good saying. We don't want just a good saying. We want understanding. We want to know what we're doing and what, he, what he's expecting of us. Okay? Let's see what's up. He says, so these things I speak. So when we saw Yahushua speaking, not here, back when he was after Musha, what was he speaking? It's tight. Huh? I can't hear you. Talk louder. That's what he told him. Because Musha didn't tell him that. Yahuwah told him to come forth. He said, my being, uh, he said, my being, my, well, my boy, Musha is moot. So if Musha was moot, Musha couldn't have been talking to him. And he let him know that he was going to be with him just like he was with Musha. That's why when Yahushua came on the scene, the Mashiach, he already knew he with me just like he was with him. Even the people testified when Yahushua came, they said, we know he spoke to Musha, but we didn't know he spoke to this man. Neither did they know. If you know he spoke to Musha, you should have known he spoke to me. He let him know. He wrote to me. Isn't that right? Musha wrote to him. He said that a Nabal, Yahuwah, is going to raise up like unto me, and get where he's going to come from. He said he's going to come from Creflo Dollar Church Ministry. 
Now he said, coming from our king, he's taking him straight from among us. So where would the people should have been looking for their looking for him to come from? They should have been looking among the and the Anak, them, Amalek, the Moabites, the Hittites. Everybody knew he was coming. He said he's gonna bring him out from the right from the king. Hold you got. Let's say, see if that the 18 chapter, 1818. See that all our hot dabarim. They call it Deuteronomy. See the 1818. Y'all want to give him a microphone? Got the money. Bad sign. Let me tell y'all the bad signs y'all do. I don't know how y'all sat back and watched them kids cry forever and a day. I guess y'all ears just be so unsensitive too. You just kind of get them and move them. You learn how to, do, you learn how to get a child to kind of turn them, detour them from what they're doing. All these good things. I guess it's a new parenting skill they got out today called Book Call. Let me just sit my ass here as long as I can. Let them keep doing it. If I got to listen to it, everybody's got to listen to it. It's terrible. It's very terrible. I want to tell y'all that publicly and let it be known to y'all. It's, it's things you do to deter the child and you stop them. You remove them. They're kids. They're going to do that. So you set up and you be wise about how you do stuff, how long you let them cry, 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 cry. You can't just let them cry, 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 cry. You got to start looking at something wrong, something ain't wrong. You start adjusting them to move them to something else. It's something they need, they need to be changed. Or you learn, I got to stop you because you start to make your own way and you got me serving you. I watch some of y'all, y'all serve the kid. Y'all don't raise them. You never let a child do what they want to do. Period. I want all y'all to learn that right now, 101. And ain't smell they been getting in y'all ass about this stuff. <laughs> That's just flat. They're not raising a child. The child raising y'all. I've been watching this stuff. Y'all take too long to move a child. You turn a child quick. You can't do that. Who in here know I know what I'm talking about? Y'all can't let them do that. This is the new parent stuff. Y'all watch TV. Well, I don't want to whoop them. I just want to talk to them. Every child ass need to get peeled like an onion. That's part mm -hmm. of life. Your ass need to get peeled like a blooming onion. Bring your ass on a plate. Sit up here, that little thing just blossom. You tell them kids, get them good ass whipping, they pepper be fat. <laughs> pepper be fat. Look, man, they gonna tan his ass up in it. Stop it. Woo. Y'all can call the police, same thing. Hey, let, let, let me tell you something. See, when you ran up one eyed kid, it's different than white kid. White kid's gonna be somebody. Yeah, that's true. All right, all right. Y'all playing around. <laughs> yeah. We say stuff to our kid. White folks never tell their kid. Did, did, let me ask you, did your parent, ever, did your mom and dad ever get mad at you? Yeah. Did your parent ever say, your ass make me sick, I just wish you'd die? No. <laughs> I'm just asking, they laughing. Some of you folks them your ass ain't going to be nothing. <laughs> no. Anyway, anybody ever heard any word like this? Look at these folks. <laughs> See, this is a rear that we typically have had. So what you got to do? <laughs> and, and, and you know what? It came from the oppressor. Because what he told you, that's why we stayed slaves so long. So in doing it, it kind of dampened us a little bit from trying to excel the achieve. You got to learn how to turn them and stop them from stuff. Listen, I tell you the time, these so-called Negro kids, you can't let these kids ever get in their mind. They can just go loose and do what they want to do. No, no, I got to stop you now because you're going to pull out there. That, that man ain't going to give you no second chance. That man kill you first shot. That man shot Tremere Rice. He got another job. Tremere Rice was 12. Now, he, now that shot and did nothing. Think if he'd have done something. That police officer never got the call. He'd have just shot. As soon as he came in, like right up, he came in like this. He'd have got that damn thing and throw in reverse, snail that wheel like this. Scoom, 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 scoom. He's like, man, got my car. This is an easy kill. Man, why the fuck made move while shooting up? Just go out the way, just throw that shit in reverse, just sling the wheel around. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Somebody else in here we know damn. Ryan Street. <laughs> throw that thing right. and shoot out the passenger window with somebody else right there. Come on, Bobby, for a second. Now I'm swing, you gotta swing around with him. Come, we're going, right, we going that way. Now I'm gonna swing that thing in reverse. We're gonna have boom, 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 boom. <laughs> they ain't hit the 
was the nail time. <laughs> I didn't find a day. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I want to tell Breeze Austin no story I got. I said, what? Man, how you didn't even hit your passenger? <laughs> yeah, y'all off the chain. But now, <laughs> what we're trying to do, let's see what he said. Look at this. This is the 18th chapter of the book of All Our Hot Dabbering, and this is, and these, the words. And these, the words. Let's see. What he told us he's going to do. This is the, the Greek, the Latin, English perversion. Let's see. I will comb them up a nabi from among their akim, like unto thee, and will put my dabarim in his paw, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. See that? Y'all hear what he told us? That's why we were watching. That's why it was important when Yahushua told us, and this, this was important for us. Because we are people, we look for evidence. See, people believe, like the so-called Negro people, they, we believed in Jesus. We really didn't have no reason to. It made no sense, because I'm not just, this is what we're going to look. Oh, because of the name. Take the name out of the equation. You really never examine the story enough to tie it back into where it really fits. This is what he told you. I will coon them up on the bar of their king. Now, that raise up meant he was going to take them up from among us, which he did. He was actually looking for somebody even from the grave. He was looking deeper. Than, he was speaking deeper than what we said. Because we'll read it, talk about, even with Gamiano, talk about how people rose up. Hold you, in the fifth, hold you got fifth chapter right quick. <clears throat> Let me show you something. Why stuff is important for you to look at it. See if that the fifth chapter of the book of Acts of the Shala King, they call Acts of the Apostles. 32, 34. <clears throat> Let me see. 32, 34. What's the last verse? 42. So jump down about 39. Let me see what I say. Acts of the Shala Kings. They'll put Acts of the Apostles. Or it should be impostors by the imposters by them. But the workers actually did the work. What's well, that, 39? Might have gone. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see. Back on up. What I, told you. I said 39. Go up. I'm going to go up. 35. Let me see that. Yeah, 35. 35. Matter of fact, give me 32. 35 what I want. Let me hear 32. Come on. <clears throat> 535 what I want. We'll look at 32 since we're there. All right, listen. And we are his witnesses of these things. And who else? So is also the Ruach HaKadosh, huh? whom Elohim hath given to them that obey him. What well, we, we say to them, they say, and they put to all them, which he ain't got to, to them would be all of them. Whoever obey him would be all if they got it. But he gave it to them that obey him, which is Shama, which is, <clears throat> where Shama, well, I don't know. Obey will follow the Shama, Shama will be here. So what we have for obey. Because you're actually listening with the intent to do. So if you're listening with the intent to do, obedience will have to follow. Y'all got it? That's the difference. You got people just, just listen, and you got people that listen with the intent to do. That's the, that's the difference between us and people who don't receive. <clears throat> well, I heard it, but you weren't listening with the intent to do. That's the difference, okay? So that's why he don't give everybody raw hock and dog. He said, then said Yahushua to those Yahudim that. So they were the only people, that on mon only people on mind on him were the people that heard. No, he just gave the attention to those that did. Those that don't, I don't really give a flying flip about them because they don't care about themselves. He's looking, why am I going to try to vest interest in you? You know, it don't make sense. So those that actually are mine on me, these are the ones I'm trying to make sure they understand what I'm telling them about me. Y'all got it? So this is important. So he get a Ruach HaKadosh, and this is what he said when he give it to you. You only have it so you can be part of the witnesses. See, a witness is somebody that's seen or heard something mm. have inf or have information about something. You could be used and counted as a witness. You have mm. valuable information about something. You seen or you heard something. You could be a witness. And those people that would be a witness to him, he said, I gave them the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the spirit of separation. And that spirit of separation is what's going to keep you and separate <coughs> you from those. going to keep you Badal, which is separated from those. They're going to be in Sheol. Why would I give you a spirit of separation if everybody's going to be together? Mm. Because that spirit is going to come back up. And that's what's going to make the difference. That's what's going to show you from them. That's how he said, just like, a she just like sheep and goat 
typically have some of the same characteristics, but there are some things that differate them. Now you look at sheep and goats in America, one has horn, one doesn't, one the other doesn't. But typically you look at them in other regions where we come from, sheep have just the bigger horns as goats. But his goal is always to throw you off. These sheep you see here are sheep he's breeding. He breeds, just like you see the niggas here. These niggas are breeding just like them sheep. And you ain't got no horns either. <clears throat> he strip you down and leave you defenseless. All right, 33. When, when they shama that, they were cut to the law and took counsel to slay them. See that? That cut them. And they took counsel to put him to death. Moot. Come on. <clears throat> then stood there up one in the council, a parashim named G Gamaliel, a doctor of the Torah. Y'all see that? He stood up. He was a teacher. He was a lineman. Listen. Had in reputation among all the Om and Amar to put the Shalakim forth a little space. And he came up. And he used his position, and he used the fact that people looked up to him and respected him and told the people, give him some room. Let's examine him and see for ourselves. Listen. And said unto them, ye on the shame of Yasharal, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these on the shame. You see what he said? Y'all need to make sure what y'all doing now. Y'all need to know what y'all doing before y'all proceed further. You need to know what you're doing. And you know what happened? A lot of people doing stuff and they don't have no idea what they're doing. This is what he told them. For before these Yamin rose see, up see to uh oh, you said what happened? For before these Yamin what happened? Come up, told us, boasting himself to be somebody. And what happened? To whom a number of Anashim, about four hundred, joined themselves. And what happened? Who was slain, and all as mean as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. Mm. Listen. After this, each come up, Yehuda of Galilee and the Yamin. You keep saying somebody else rised up. Yes, sir. And what happened? In the Yamin of the taxing. Yeah. And drew away much arm after him. <clears throat> Let me ask y'all a question. <clears throat> Who want to know why this is important? Yehusha was born during the time of taxing. So when this guy jumped up, guess who he looked like? Yeah. And he was from Galilee. Mm -hmm. Guess who he looked like, Dave? He done coomed up mm -hmm. Galilee <clears throat> during the time of taxing. This got to be him. You got theaters done coomed up. Mm -hmm. 400 people. Look at, listen, listen, this is what he told y'all. I want y'all to just understand why it was important and why it's important to examine, your, to examine what you're doing. Listen. And, and drew away much arm after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Came back and got it right? Were dispersed. You know what they looked at? I don't trust nobody at this point. I don't believe nobody. I just, I go into my own device and leave myself. I've been let down. Have you been let down or have you not been, you, you were falling improperly. Mm -hmm. You didn't know what you were doing and you effed up and then you're going to put it on nobody else ain't right. But if you notice, both situations, what was significant about them? They coomed up. Listen. And now I say unto you. Do what? Refrain from these unashamed. Tell them why, son. And let them alone. Why? For if this counsel or this work be of unashamed. Tell them what happened. It will come to naught. That's what they learned about when they came to Peter <clears throat> and when they came to um, Yehuda. This work was not Elohim. That's why it crashed. That's why all the people were dispersed, because it was not an Elohim. What else happened, son? But if it be of Elohim. But now, rather, if it be the work of Elohim. Ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against Elohim. Back over at 18 and 18. Allah Dabarim. See, that's why it's important when you're reading 
to pay attention and not just think everything was so simple. Everybody just ran up and that's him. No, a lot of people rose up. What y'all think? People just sitting back doing nothing? It's already somebody trying to jump up and trying to lead people away. And people get, that's him, the black messiah. That's him running behind something. He, that's why he left a script. Pay attention. 1818, listen. I will coom them up a Nabi from and among And those them. guys will coom, they said, Yahuwah, coom me up. Book told you they rose up on their own. <clears throat> Galilee, during the time of taxes, same time. Remember when taxes started, uh, Yosef, who they called Joseph, was taking Maureen, who was yet pregnant with him up there. They give an account for their taxes, which is a census. That's how they tax you. When you do your tax paper, what you think they want to know? How many dependents you have? That's a census. You actually think them people need your money, need you to actually fill out that paperwork? <clears throat> Hell, your tax paper tell them what they need to know. They can see your inconsistency and your consistency. Hell, you done had a two-year-old for 36 years. Somebody <laughs> that stupid. People <laughs> think somebody that's stupid. The same two-year-old for 36 years. No, he always going to be my little boy. Quit being stupid. All right, listen to what he told you. I will comb them up a Nabi from among their Akeem. And where you think them guys came from? Strangers of Rome? Oh, oh somebody right, somebody jump right down. That's what he was talking about in the book. Why Cam jumped up? Cam, where Cam a far he right here with us? Right here. That's the book. Cam, let the book tell it. <laughs> Cam jump up all of a sudden. Here we go. He right here from among them. Cam one our brother. It's Cam. That man said, listen. I will come in. That's what you had to pay attention to. That's why I said we're reading comprehension is so important. Did he say he's going to jump up on their own? No. He told them, I have not sent them. They ran. I haven't spoken to any people. They're no, they no bull. They call themselves <clears throat> prophesied. That's why you watch it. Them people ran around. He already told us in the book of Yahoo. I haven't sent these people. Y'all keep running behind these people. Pay attention to what I told you. I told you I will come up one from among you of your eye king. Listen to what he told you. Like unto thee. See and, that? And we'll put and, my And down. this is what he told you. Uh-oh, listen. He was going to be like Musha. Those are characteristics you need to pay attention to. Hello? Listen. And we'll put my dabarim in his paw. Yeah, in his mouth, his paw. The opening of his mouth. Is going, what's going to come out of the opening of his mouth is going to be my words. So it's going to be a, the people that were watching him going to be attending, they were paying attention to his mouth. Because Alahim said, those are my words that's going to come out of his mouth, out of his paw. Listen. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command He's going to tell them what I told him. Let's go back to 8 and 28. You're Ukanai. Y'all getting an understanding? Yes, sir. Man, people don't have to run around. I said, be a Christian. It's just, you can do anything, man. You can just, you can smoke doo-doo. You can get further. Man, if I be a crowd, smoke doo-doo. I know it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense to be no Christian. That's right. They ain't going to have, what, they going to be smart than me? They going to be doing something going to be more proud of me smoking doo-doo? Absolutely not. I get more benefit out of smoking doo-doo than sit around listening to a message about Jesus. It don't even make no sense to be that stupid. Listen. Then said Yahushua unto them, when ye have lifted up the bin of Adam, <clears throat> then shall ye know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Abba hath lamed me, I speak these things. Mm-hmm. See that? Listen. And he that shall lock me is with me. See that? And he that sent me is with me. When that happened? The Abba had not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. That's the same thing we got to look at. And now, what was important for this, and you know what they recognized with their conversation? He told us that Yasharal was his who? which will make him our Abba. And he just told him, he just said, the Abba have never left me alone because I do always the things that please him. Why did he leave us? We displeased him. So at the same time, while he was telling us why the Abba stayed with him, he was trying to let you know at the same time, if you do one and one, you would understand why. He left you and do subtraction. Why did he leave you? You didn't please him. Y'all got it? You didn't please him. He even told you when they came away, listen, you can take it that way or we can go and look at the marriage. 
it come to pass when a man had taken a, a shaw, a isha, a wife, and she find she has no favor in his own. His own would be what? His appearance and his knowledge of her. And she can clearly see he does not care for her. Then the book said, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, put it in her hand, and send her out. After that, what she can do? He said she can go and be another man's. That's what he told her. That's how we were able to go to these deities. Listen, these people have no idea what's going on. First of all, that was the only way legally that you could go out and you could be with the other gooey. We have a writing where he told us that he put us away. He said, I put you away. That's how we could go and be with Jesus, Buddha. That's how we could be with Hindu God. He told us that. He said, but after that, he said, you cannot come back. He said, after that, you defiled. That's your Torah. That's why it was important for us to understand what Yahushua did for us. Pick up the fifth chapter of the book. Of, let me show you how this going to work for you right quick. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. How about that? All right, listen. Therefore, if, if any each be in Mashiach. Pay attention. Therefore, who now? If any each be in Mashiach. What is he? He is a new creature. Mm. Tell them what happened. Old things are passed away. Tell me about when I went and got with Jesus, when I was a Buddhist, when I was a strong Hindu worshiper, when I was taking yoga, teaching yoga, when I was non denominational. How else was you going to get back? Let's see what he told you. Behold, all things are become new. Mm. And? All things are of Elohim. Who did what? Hath reconciled us. What is to reconcile? What? To us to himself by Yahushua HaMashiach. Listen. And hath given to us. The who? The Sharoth of reconciliation. Listen what happened. To wit that Elohim was in Mashiach. Doing what? Reconciling the alarm unto himself. That's what he said he was doing. That's why he was in him. He was right. He was reconciling us through him. That's right. Y'all got to remember, Elohim is a ruach. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do it himself. He had to create him a man and get inside of him. Mm. So he was declaring that I was in him. Right. That's how I was reconciling you back to me. I was in him. Listen not imputing their trespasses unto them. You mean not accounting? Not accounting their wrongdoing? You talking about when I was unclean and in his eyes, in his own, and he put me away and I went and I dealt and indulged with other foreign deities, other Elohims? Yahushua coming was not accounting that to me. Because remember, if he accounted to me, I couldn't get back to him. Maybe I have no idea what y'all doing, do you? You don't understand the value of them. You don't know, you don't know your one columns, your tens, your hundreds, your thousands, your millions. You don't know your columns. We first started doing that, right? They made a draw a line down. This is your ones, these are your tens, these are your hundreds, these are your millions. Y'all remember that? How many of y'all remember that? They would do that. They would draw a line. You have Matt, they'll draw it. I said, look, these are your ones, these are your tens, these are your hundreds, these are your thousands, these are your millions. So we didn't do me, we do the thousand. So you understood your value. You don't understand where certain things set the value. The fact he's selling the right, the fact that he said on the right hand of Allahim, one in a million shot. I just took the one column and made a million. That was a one in a million shot. That's how he did it. You had to understand your value system. To the wit, Elohim was in him. That's how he was reconciling them back to us, not imputing our trespassing. See, he had you on a couple of ends. He had you on the end that you was a son. And you've been disinherited by a younger one. He said the elder was going to serve the younger. Then he took you and said you was an ashat to him. 
But then he came up with a bill of divorcement. And then he told you after he had put it in your hand, you went away. He said, you could not return. That's how important. People, see, when you understand, do you understand you're not supposed to be him? I'm not supposed to be him. I ain't talking about in this place. We're not supposed to be. There's no way. Do you understand this was already set? This was already preordained? This was already set aside. I know you. I told you that. So guess what? Don't cross me. Because if I give you this, you're done. You'll never get back. And guess what I did? You ain't going to believe it. What I did? I crossed him. I did like Albert I, I crossed him. I crossed him. And now you can't get back. He said, I already knew you were going to cross him. You think he knew Adam wasn't going to eat at the arts? You think he didn't? He had no idea he was going to eat at the arts? I already made preparation for that. See, you're not serving somebody and I already made preparation. I made preparation for that. See, it's good for you to know why you're thinking you're planning. He already, he planned way before us. Way before us he planned this. I knew what you were going to do. So I already had, I, he already put in himself that, you know what? I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you. And all we were trying to look at how he was going to do it. He made himself a man and put himself inside of a man. But got him a man. Said, this is my son. This man is going to, he's going to do all of my will and he's going to execute all of my mosh pots. Hello? And he realized that's the same thing got to happen to us. All of he ain't got to be inside of every one of us in order for us to do this. We got to take on the will of being his son. All right, come on. And hath committed unto us the debar of reconciliation. He gave us the word of reconciliation. Listen. Now then we are ambassadors for Mashiach. Representatives on his behalf. Doing what? As though Elohim did beseech you by us. So you hear, that's why he said he that heareth you. No, we'll be ambassadors. He talking to a man. That's what he told me in 13 and 41, an accident apostle. Accident the shot, behold, you despise them and, because they can't figure, and your parish. Because he said, I'm working a work next week. In your day, a work, you're not going to mind it, though a man going to tell it to you. It was already preordained and said, a man was going to tell it to you. He wouldn't let a spirit do it. He didn't try it. You ain't going to hear it. He let a man tell it to you. It would cause a man you got away. He used a man to bring you back. Hello? It only made sense. Listen to what he did. We pull you in Mashiach's stead. We ask you in his stead, in his place. Be ye reconciled to Elohim. Once y'all get back together. I think y'all can work this thing out. <clears throat> I think y'all make a nice couple. Why don't y'all try to work this thing out? That's what I'm doing as an ambassador. I'm asking y'all in his stead. Why don't y'all try to get back together? Why don't y'all work this thing out? You and all of him. Hello? Yes, what he asking ain't unreasonable. See, we could never get back. That's how important he was to us. See what he told me in Yerim Yahoo 3 and 1 right quick. Yerim Yahoo. Just so you can see for yourself. They call it Jeremiah. Okay. My time getting ready. I think somebody be moving my watch up. All right, listen. They say. You hear what it, they say? Who said Lee? They say. That's what they say. Let's see. If they each put away his Asha and she go from him. Well, Dewey Rim says, commonly said, the Greeks ain't never say that. The Greeks say if a man put away his Asha and she depart from him and do what? Become another each, shall he return unto her again. Shall not that arise be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the Zana with many lovers, yet return again to me, said Yahuwah. 
Hold on for a minute. And has returned to me. Hold on for a minute. He said, nevertheless, return to me. Play the hollow minute lover, yet return again to me. This and the way they wrote this, they made it right as though they were saying, He said, Come to me. And that's not what he said. He was saying, You have gone a whoring with many raims for shepherds, ra, plural, and hath returned to me, said Yahuwah. Now you come back to me. And that makes sense that he told you. They said that when a woman. Get that paper and she leaves, she can't come back. And you don't went out and you don't been with many of these Raheem, these shepherds. He said, and now you returning to me? Listen. Lift up thine eyes unto the high Malcolm and see where has the, where has not been lean with, mm. where thou has not been lean with. In the ways in the Darak has thou sat for them as the Arabian in Bamabar, and thou hast polluted the Arats with thy whoredoms and with thy Rosha. He says a deserted crow. Goodness. That differently. He said, the Greek said, I mean, the land said, waiting for them as robbers in the Bamabar. Where has thou sat for them as the Arabians in the Bamabar? That's not the same thing. It's raw, unless the Arabians were robbers, but then he said they were crows. That is, that's racist. You know a crow black. Yeah. He said, you son of your black crow. They didn't used to call people black crow when y'all growing up. Did they ever use that terminology like that? They didn't even say crow for something. I'm thinking about <laughs> Just the same thing of race you can think of the same. That man said, my uncle Jim Crow. No. <laughs> no, Jim Crow. No, it seemed like they called people, it seemed like it was a crow was a not general, uh, who, yeah, say like they, not, they might call some call people a black crow. No, crow ball. Yeah. Oh, they say, oh, that's a hip word. I don't know what it meant though. People say that it's crow is who? Don't they call a woman a crow? They call a woman a crow. Yeah, an old crow. An old crow. That's an old bat. <laughs> man, look at him, man. It get terrible in him. <laughs> What you say about that 138 degree uh, octane? You heard of something about the crow? Look at why it's still looking. She said, when you heard some, when you don't see some 250 degree um, temperature uh, octane gas? Yeah, now 103. Don't worry about it. That's what we're gonna get you. Old hag, you kind of. That when you when you call them an old hag, now you talking about calling like a witch. You about to be at 103 checks. They keep it up. So he said him the way I'm saying, as a deserted crow, a, yeah, a deserted crow, and has defiled a land with their Zanu fornication and thy Rosha. Come on. See, I might want to change the raven to crow. We'll get a chance to look at it. Listen. Therefore, the showers have been withholding, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refuses to be ashamed. Hold on for a minute. Therefore the showers have been withholding. That's not what they say. It's saying thou hast, and thou, and thou didst retain many roins for a stumbling block to thyself. Thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou didst come, become shameless toward all. So that's not the same statement. He's still talking about how many of those, those shepherds, those shepherds that she took wound up being her stumbling block. Mm. All right, come on. Y'all see the indifference in the writings? Yes, sir. Come on. Wilt thou not from this time sigh unto me? My Abba, thou art the God of my youth. Okay. What else is that? Listen. Will he reserve his anger alone? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done Rosha things as thou couldest. And had power to do them. Okay. Come on. Yahuwah said also unto me in the Yamim of Josiah the Malak, Hast thou seen 
that that which backsliding Yashraw had done, she is gone up upon every high har and under every green ot, and there had played the zanah. I'm the tray. Come on. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous Aku Yehuda saw it. Uh huh. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Yasharal committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous Akut Yehuda Yara not, but went and played the Zana also. Mm. Mm. She said, fear not, but went herself also committed. Landu. Come on. And it came to pass through the lightness of her Zanu that she defiled the Arats and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Mm. That's why they got them vibrating. Go ahead. <laughs> and yet, for all this, her treacherous Akut Yehuda had not turned unto me with her whole law, but faintly said Yehuda. Mm-hmm. Falsely, come on. And Yehuda said unto me, the backsliding Yasharal had justified herself more than treacherous Yehuda. Stop. It's a herself. The Greek said himself. They went back to speaking to him as a male. They're talking in a feminine position. Yasharal is a male, but he's speaking in a feminine at this point. Okay, go ahead. Go and proclaim these Dabarim toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Yasharal, said Yahuwah, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am recome, said Yahuwah, and I will not keep anger alone. Mm -hmm. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against Yahuwah, the Allahim, and hast scattered thy darak to the strangers under every green ice, and ye have not obeyed my call, said Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Turn, O backsliding Benim, said Yahuwah, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one, one of a city, and two of a mishpachah, and I will bring you to Saum. Well, the Greeks say he said he's going to rule over them. So I guess they took that as husband, because the husband's supposed to rule the wife. But he using, the Greeks say he said, I will rule over you. He didn't use it as husband, but it had been described in the marriage. Mm hmm. Well, and I will give you Roim according to my law. See that? What's he going to do? What? I will give you Roim according to my law. Uh huh. We shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, I'm going to let y'all go. I know y'all hearing that rain, but as soon as you ride that, it'll stop after a while. But th this is the thing I want y'all to understand. The question that they had, they want to know which is true. How long was it going to be before they can get back? They want to know will Yahuwah be angry always to the point. Because they looked at the man when he wouldn't take her back. He wouldn't put him away because he was angry. He was done with him. So now you're looking at Yahuwah. He said, I will marry you. If I say I put you away, they already knew what this meant. They were taught in the Torah, in all our hot dabarim, and these were the words. Those words already let them know, I'm done with you. If I give you this paper, it's over with. We're done. And you can't ever come back. And now we were looking at, we put ourselves out here, and now Yehuda didn't feel, and now Yehuda got themselves out, and now we'll to the doc come up. Why do you think it has to be so... Um, tough on us is to make us fear so we don't put ourselves and our salvation in such, a, in such jeopardy or such, uh, 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 in such a situation where we can't get back. And they want to know how long was he going to be angry with us? Will he do this always? But then he came along to give us a solution that if we repent and turn with our whole law. But he told you, Yehuda did it, but it was in pretense. That's why it's so important for us to look at these things, consider what we're doing, and make sure it's, of a, it's coming from an honest place. I know we laugh, we play about things, but when it comes to your salvation, don't ever let nobody play with that. You got to make sure you got this right and you got to understand it. But he told you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you shepherds because you've already gone to people. These people made a fool out of you, and they became your stump. You know how hard it is for people to hear me because they're so enwebbed and tangled with Jesus? They're so in turn with the word church. They keep reading it, and they teach you if you read it, that's the word. That's what's there. Because somebody put it there, doesn't make it right. Now, that's why you can look at three different people that wrote. Before James, two people. 
And you can see the miswriting and if, if the comprehension is different because we read in King James, it's not like he was saying return yeah. to me. And he never told, he said, now you coming back to me. Yeah. But the way he wrote it, it looked like he was saying, come to me and he never was telling you that. But he did come out to give them a solution when they asked, will he be angry always? But he said, I got to give you a raw after my own law that's going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. So you won't get yourself back in this situation. When you return now, this time you'll stay. It'll be for a long haul. But the way we've been given things, it seems as though it's okay when it hasn't been okay. He's been setting these protocols in place for us. He knew we were people set on mischief. We are people that get other people out. Yasharal got us off. Now, other people got off from following up. He looked at, I have got to put someone here to get these people to get back here and stay. We've been scattered too long. Scattered brain, scattered through all these lands and different places. It's time to make sure we get it right. I want everybody to consider for themselves where you at and this something you want to do or not. I'm being honest with you. It's late. You, we can't get this wrong. We've been wrong too long. It's a lot of work involved. These people are comfortable with bad writing. It is wrong. It don't even say the same thing. You know what they say? This is my God. Your book is in error. It's scary. If you went to school and your teacher told you to copy out something, and when they got it, it's totally different when they wrote, you still graded as right? Because that's the, you're completely wrong. You don't want to know what kind of fool sits here and look at something and copies it completely wrong. You're asking something wrong with you. You need to get checked. These people know it's wrong and they'll keep fathering. That's sick. That's too.